sorry for the technical difficulties, everybody. Uh, I am Zach once again, uh, otherwise known as Great Samino. Uh, once again, we are being joined uh, by you lovely folks today for uh, The Hole in the World, The War Report, an interlude that is set in our normal game of The Hole in the World. Uh, this interlude taking place during uh, the uh, of war, of uh, which is kind of secretly um, hidden from the minds of the... Uh, everyday residents of Saturine, the city of truth, the city of notions. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to reintroduce my cast in the appropriate order. Uh, I uh, am joined once again on my left hand side on screen by uh, the lovely Marcy, who is playing. Hi, one more time. Here we go. <laughs> Uh, in case you missed it, I'm Marcy, aka Experimental Madness. You can find me around the internet under that username. Um, and just to keep things super brief, I am playing uh, the Irreverent Mott, the connected empathic apostate who fuses nightmares to fists. I am also drinking coffee that has way too much whiskey in it. So if you see me making any strange faces after I take a sip, it tastes <laughs> fine. I'm just not ready for that kickback. <laughs> uh, excellent. Um... <laughs> And Bill, who are you playing? Tell us about yourself today. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Bill. You can find me on Discord at Ghostbike. And today I'm playing Kieran von Miles, the tailor, an aromatic stoic of the Order of Makers who warps time and space. And if I make any faces today, it is a character defect. <laughs> Excellent. Good to know. You almost got me there. <laughs> <laughs> um... Finally, on the right-hand side, uh, the other two remaining uh, players who have been skipped over almost. Um, uh, uh, go ahead, Hopper. Tell us about yourself and who you're playing today. Uh, hey, it's me, Hopper. Um, I don't know why I'm doing Roddy Raccoon voice. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, uh, it's me, Hopper. Uh, I use they, them pronouns, and I can be found in on and around the interwebs at Fail Deadly. That is with a three instead of an E, so it kind of looks like Fail Badly, because I'm a bad person. And today, I will be playing another bad person. Um, I am playing uh, codenamed Hammer, who uh, who we know is uh, has the first name of Okris. And uh, they are a iconoclastic ardent apostate who heralds endings. Excellent. Um, so uh, finally, uh, playing our uh, one of our final uh, PCs here, or our final PC, rounding out this uh, motley crew. Uh, Marissa, who are you playing? Tell us about yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Marissa, also known as Critical Kitten around the hallowed halls of the World Wide Web. Uh, and I am playing Allegra von Hollingsworth, uh, call sign the Rook. And she is an aromatic stoic of the Order of the Vance who claims dominion over ideas. Um, and if that uh, portability doesn't sound familiar, that is because we homebrewed it, as I think Hopper did with theirs. Um, Allegra is a Vancean scientist turned battle strategist in the war, uh, and she has a raven, a Sophonox, who roosts in her intricate updo of sleek black curls. Excellent. I love it. Um, and yeah, the other thing I will uh, go ahead and note is if you guys would like, uh, you can learn more about these player characters or get a little bit of a reissue of that recap uh, by typing in the first name of each of the characters that you see on screen as we have added a, uh, with a exclamation point at the front of it. So you guys uh, have access to our Nightbot uh, command. So check that out if you wanna learn more. Um, so last time we left uh, our current PCs, um, actually this takes a little bit of explanation. So let me cue up the music as we begin the story proper. So when last we left our PCs, they were in the middle of a pitched battle uh, between a squad of some unknown creatures, which are uh, only known by the fact that they are an invasionary force and they are the uh, titular enemy of the war uh, that uh, so many have been vying against and dying uh, in their struggle. So that being said, uh, we have found out that these four player characters are representative of the Cataract, uh, a secretive group uh, named after a secretive entity of the uh, Blue Sun. The Cataract itself is a seems to be a Black Ops team 
uh, performing uh, really um, top secret missions uh, for the army of Saturine uh, within the war proper. However, prior to uh, the beginning and commencement of this uh, first mission, which in and of itself was to have these four members uh, acquire a strange munition uh, out of uh, an operating battle theater of the enemy behind enemy lines, uh, we also found out that um, this entire scene is happening within a living document, a uh, magical simulacrum of what transpired uh, according to the war, and which uh, our four traditional PCs, Gavriel, um, <laughs> uh, uh, Twig, uh, I am uh, Maurice, and... Um, Kiri are all a couple sessions away and you've already forgotten your kids. <laughs> I know. How My... dare do we mean so little to you? <laughs> There's a uh, lot. Yeah, I love all my children equally. Gabriel Twig. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mercedes Benz. <laughs> <laughs> Just I gotta guys, I gotta fight through the fight <laughs> through all of the um the, the technical hurdles and then all right, my brain. Now we goes. have to name all of Zach's NPCs. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Hazel, fuck. The Highwaymen. <laughs> the Highway. Oh, oh no. the legendary Lost Highwaymen. <laughs> um, the, the the real MVPs here, clearly. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, our traditional four PCs are uh, actually inside of the simulacrum, watching all of this transpire um, with the assistance of uh, the voice of a disembodied author or. Uh, some other entity that is helping them kind of see what is transpiring. So um, all this has been going on, and when last we left our previous session, uh, we were in the middle of combat, uh, in which case it would appear that you guys had uh, managed to take on a squad of the enemy. Um, I believe, uh, Everett, you were uh, smashing into a pair of sharpshooters in a partially ruined tower, uh, above, looking over the battlefield proper, and I believe Kieran, as well as Allegra, you are making your way towards the center of the uh, munition, which appears to be uh, radiating out a particular f poisonous or radioactive field that seems to do terrible things to those within it. Um, Okris, at the same time, is waging a war on this uh, single squad of um, enemy, uh, using a uh, variety of devastating effects. Now, They're already that... dead. I'm fl I'm fl I'm literally dropping out of the sky. <laughs> is where we cut off. Me falling out of the fucking sky. <laughs> it's great. This is fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, when last we left, I believe uh, Allegra had just uh, caught up to Kieran. Uh, when all of a sudden, a strange creature strode out uh, from behind this munition in a very creepy voice saying, is it someone new? Now this creature uh, is not quite like anything you've ever seen before because it appears to be uh, a humanoid creature uh, with some sort of decaying skin or kind of sallow features. Uh, it's distinguishing um, appearance, however, the uh, most distinguishing part of this experience uh, being the fact that it is cut in half, and the two halves appear to be floating above the ground, and each half, uh, there seems to be these large worm-like um, protrusions um, kind of uh, wriggling out, and uh, at the very ends of them you see very, what look to be very hungry mouths. Um, so with that being the case, uh, there's a couple other things that we need to do. Uh, first off, I need to change the music to something a little bit more um, intense. Okay, so you guys are engaged in battle. Kieran, I would like you to make a depletion roll as you have used your seam ripper, your object uh, to um, basically ensure that you are not affected by the field while you are close to the munition. How'd you do? Uh, so I have depleted, I rolled a three. Okay, that effect of your object is depleted. You may not use it again until the sun next rises. But but I still managed to shut down that area. 
Oh right? yeah. Okay, good. You do not know for how long, I will say. Mm. Uh, um, that said, uh, Allegra, you have caught up. Uh, we are going back to the top of the round as this creature uh, seems to be moving close to you uh, from a far distance. Um, top of the round, I believe, was Ogris. What do you do? Uh, <clears throat> I believe I'm dropping out of the sky, basically behind uh, Mott, let go, and then swooped. And so uh, Okris is having the joyous experience of uh, a uh, little bit of a paradrop without any uh, fucking parachute. <laughs> um, so we are currently still under, uh, at the um, kind of close to the end of the last episode, uh, the hammer uh, cast crescendo. So we are in currently in round two of that, which means that all actions um, undertaken during this have a plus one to their venture. Um, is there anybody still alive that Mott hasn't thoroughly <laughs> mutilated, murdered? Uh, one of them, I'll say this, one of them, they should both still be alive, I think. One is blind, and I'm about to engage the, the second one. These are the two sentries. Uh, oh. Those are the ones in the tower. Um, the ones on the ground are the squad of eight. You've aren't, killed... Mm -hmm. are, oh, those aren't all dead? I thought they were all dead. They were fairly devastated. Um, I'd say that out of the eight of them, you've killed five. Oh, okay. Am I, I misremembering something? Because I could have sworn I got dropped on the tower and was dealing with a pair of people. You are. It's, okay, it's great. Two separate right, that's forces. what I wanted. Oh, yeah. gotcha. Mm -hmm. So basically, uh, you are handling the uh, ground f uh, forces, Okris, and uh, Everett, and you, okay. you are got top. Oh, you got, you I'm might falling even... for I'm falling a great further height than I had anticipated. This is now a concern. <laughs> You're pretty tough, though. <laughs> uh, I will tell you this. Um, roll to withstand falling to earth. Uh, I will say this. Make a physicality roll. Your challenge will be a seven. Uh, you've probably done this a fair number of times or something similar to it. Uh, so I am not going to immediately penalize you fairly terribly. Drop troopers. Uh, why am I rolling a d20? <laughs> that is not the right game. Wishful thinking. Uh, wishful thinking. Wishful thinking indeed. All right. So I'm going to spend a physicality, Benny. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I have fuck all. Um, that's not great. That's a five. Okay. Uh, this is a mixed success. Uh, so you've spent a physicality, Benny. Did you? That's the total? Yeah. Okay. So you missed it by two. So I'm going to say you get two injuries. Um, you may spend another physicality bene to negate them as per usual. I will do that. Thank okay. you. You got it. Mm -hmm. Um, I am okay. All right. Let me write that down. Okay, so I am down, um, minus two physicality. All right. Um, cool, 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 cool. So there's how many people are really close to me? Um, you are landing in the thick of them, or is that your intention? Uh, yes. Or, okay. I uh, can I, so I think you see uh, you see Ochris plummet out of the sky and um, land in what is a pretty surprise looks wet rehearsed superhero landing and it is <laughs> very hard on superhero the knees. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, you see this figure stand up um, and swinging uh, what appears to be a sledgehammer with pretty casual ease, uh, wearing a uh, grayish green field jacket that's patched and torn uh, with a blood red hood and a, uh, or sorry, a dried blood red hood and a uh, silver mask that's etched with red light um, over the half their face. Um, I think the fall has revealed that they're wearing what appears to be some sort of inky black armor underneath that field jacket. And I am going to use, uh, <laughs> Tonatorus Burst, mm -hmm. um, which has a short range. The base level is six. It costs me four. I, uh, I have two dice, and I, I, I had to make a spreadsheet because of all the math for this, y'all. I'm very excited. Um, so it targets everything within short range, uh, and currently everything within short range that gets hit takes 11 damage, and I can potentially pump that up uh, but I don't think I need to. So let me double, I'm gonna read this out, Zach, so you can tell me if I'm wrong. Uh-huh. Um, but Tonatorus Burst, where you at, boo? <laughs> Back. Ah, I unleash a deep resonant sonic wave that rolls like deafening thunder away from me. Although it can be heard from, 
for one mile or more, those within short range, except me, suffer damage equal to two less than the level of the spell. Um, so the way the math works out is it ends up everything in short range takes 11 damage. Uh, and I am rolling? Mm -hmm. oh, what's the, you said the level is 11? Uh, no, the damage is 11. Uh, the level is six. Uh, let's see. The level is six. Uh, I have pl two to, plus two to the venture, and I roll two dice. Excellent. Okay, so roll two dice. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, the level is eight. I lied. Okay. So actually, that is a successful... Um, that is a... You don't need to roll. You've, your uh, venture exceeded the challenge. Um, so I will say this. You do 11 points of damage. However, you have made a noise that can be heard up to a mile away. So um, if there was a... Um, I will say this is... You said it's immediately within the short range, so it wouldn't affect the munition, right? Uh, yeah, it's it's short range, which I believe is like what is that, like fifty feet or something? Okay. I I forget the ranges and cipher system. Sue me. Okay. Uh, so I will say this: um, you the sound reverberates. Um, the two uh, of this squad nearest to you. Um, basically disintegrate from the uh, noise of this, uh, the effect of this burst. However, there is one that is very badly wounded um, that is chittering at you and golden light is peeking through this half helm, uh, that uh, that oblong helm that ends in the point just past the back of its head. Um, and the golden light uh, just kind of like focuses on you and begins to effulge. Um, so that will be your turn, and I need to turn a card. See if anything specific happens. All right. So the card we've drawn uh, is the misremembered dream. Confusion, mistakes, change in identity. Dreams are strange constructs of our subconscious, made stranger still because we don't remember them clearly. Clearly, some say that in shadow, people's dreams seem strange because they're remembering the actuality. And in the actuality, people's dreams resemble the mundanity of the gray. This is at least in part true, but of course, like anything having to do with the deepest reaches of the mind, it's much more complex than that. The line between memory and dream is already tenuous. The memory of a dream or the dream of a memory. Who can count on that? Okay, it's not necessarily a bad card turn. It amplifies blue energy or blue spells and it weakens red spells. Um, Rude. So... Ah, okay. Excellent. Good for me. Yeah, very good. Bad for me. <laughs> so I will tell you this. Um, it's Everett uh, or the Irreverent Mott's turn next. So in this case, what is going to happen, um, the way this, the form that this uh, card takes, there is something nagging at the back of your head, Everett, um, as you begin um, going into your um, flowing combat. Uh, with these things. And I think part of that blue energy is manifesting. Your nightmares are on full display. Um, so as you begin kind of doing this uh, whirlwind, this balletic flows of attack, um, tell us more about what's transpiring. What do you do? Uh, yes, this is actually perfect because uh, it enhances already one of my secrets that you see in all forms of my magic, which since a lot of it is tied to my physical form, it's quite nightmarish. Uh, there are just rolling waves of darkness that I think it, that were already kind of billowing around him, but now with this uh, with this like new like turn of the suns a little bit, there's just this like enhanced effect, uh, almost like the aura is kind of reverberating or expanding, and it's literally just like flaming dark skulls, like wraiths that seem to stretch out of his own shadows. Just like every kind of nightmare imaginable is like peeling off of him in waves. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, for those that want to know specifically, this secret is really fun. Uh, it is darkening magic. It's literally just a cosmetic thing. It just causes all of my magic to have gloomy shadows Horrific skulls, hellish flames, leering eyes, sharp teeth, hissing serpents, just all of it, all the good stuff. Um, yeah, I'm essentially at this point a walking nightmare, uh, except one of my victims can't see this. 
they are blind uh, and staggering around. And I was, I think like we kind of like paused in like ultra slow motion, me with the uppercut coming in like to their partner. Um, so I'm just about to kind of, uh, in the words of a much better role player than me, pop, pop. <laughs> pop, pop. <laughs> uh, and uh, I have a question that I didn't, I don't think I asked this uh, last session. Mm -hmm. So I have Telestic Strike, which mm -hmm. works for weapons with magic. Are my fists considered, are they registered as deadly weapons? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think at this rate, at where you are in your uh, your career, as it were, I would say that yes, they very much okay, qualify. Great. They are okay, enhanced that's... by magic. Uh, amazing. Um, all right, so I'm just coming in for a regular old uh, attack, which with all of my boosts already is uh, not regular at all. <laughs> uh, all right, so what what's the venture that I'm going for to strike at? this other guy. So it is the um, level of the spell cast on your fists. Um, it is probably going to be, um, remember to make your accuracy roll. And then I think on top of that, any Bene um, you want to spend for that. I'm trying to remember if you're the level of your fists. Um, it's also well, if it, it, it's it's base right now because I already did the blinding attack. So right now it's level two. Excellent. OK. Um, um, it's actually enhanced by the plus three of my secret soul. So in fact, it is five. It's enhanced again by the crescendo. So it is in fact six. Yeah, you hit, <laughs> no problem. Okay. You you exceed the challenge. Yeah, um, the damage will be, and hang on, because I need to do math, which is my favorite thing. So, <laughs> uh, It is seven points of damage automatically. Okay. So uh, when you impact the, I assume it's the spotter that you're attacking. Yeah, I got I got the um, the the sniper, and now oh. I'm going for his buddy. Okay, so um, you uh, describe what this looks like. This uh, is like f flowing shadow. Uh, for for the benefit, I think of like how it played out since we cut like right as the attack was starting. Um, Okris kind of just dropped him down um, onto the. Was it a guard tower or some? It was some sort of of, of high wall, um, it, it, and. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, I encountered uh, one sniper with. A, was it like a regular gun or a weapon? I don't. I don't know if Mott's it, seen before. It, it, its arm was kind of molded into kind of an organic right. weapon. Um. I. Yeah. I. I, I landed on them like uh, a figure out of their worst nightmares, and I immediately blinded with my fists. Uh, the sniper uh, turned around. Uh, sort of the armor flowing. Uh, so whatever whatever this creature's sphere is, I'm surely radiating it right now, especially with the addition of the card pull. Um, you don't know how much time he has to sort of uh, <laughs> handle that before I'm breaking his jaw with this massive uppercut that's like striking upwards. And for those that want a brief description of what Mott looks like, He's already pretty terrifying without the help of the darkening magic around him. Uh, he's wearing uh, like standard sort of uh, military gear, uh, except he has no head. It's just a floating white drama mask in a void. Um, how it's suspended, nobody knows. And he's perfectly mirroring the faces of anyone who is directly interacting with him. Um, it might be difficult with these types of creatures to gain an emotion, but uh, I'm sure it's radiating just sort of an overly dramatic uh, mask of of fear um, as he strikes out. So um, I, with the misremembered dream card and with um, all of this happening, several things happen all at once, uh, which is first off, your attack is incredibly successful. Uh, you feel the wet crunch of um, this beak uh, impacting with your knuckles. Um, and you feel uh, a part of it kind of give way um, into the kind of like the flesh of its neck. Um, I will say, however, two things happen. One, uh, when you feel this thing's fear, you hear a susurrus as if scales, overlapping scales. Uh, like the scales of a serpent moving over one another. Um, the other thing that you uh, also see is in the reflection of its helmet as it um, uh, tries to turn its 
uh, body back to face you, you see the reflection of a woman shrouded in darkness, one that is very familiar to you. Familiar how? That recurring nightmare that you have. Shit. So, oh man, okay. The girl with the with mm. the feather hair. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, except, though the everything is shrouded in black, you cannot get any sense of um, her face or anything else. Although just the weird silhouette. Just the very weird silhouette, and there seems to be a shining light in the center of it that seems to pierce yeah. your vision. Okay, so. That is what you get for your turn. I believe at this point, uh, it is uh, Kieran and Allegra. Kieran, you're up first. This thing, it is beginning to float towards you in a very distressing way. What do you do? Kieran is going to patiently wait for this thing to approach a bit closer. And he is contemplating two courses of action. The first being simply to reappear at the center of this munitions place after the creature has approached him, just to bamf, if you will. (laughs) And the second being, if the opportunity presents itself, to perhaps take this creature out of time if he gets within touching distance, but he is standing ready to act. Okay, so uh, I am going to say that uh, choose one of those actions. We can kind of consider that a held action. Mm -hmm. Um, So um, tell me uh, which of those two things you would like to do. Can it be dependent on what Allegra does? Okay. If Allegra takes an offensive action, he will move. If Allegra does not, he will make an offensive move. Excellent. Okay. Um, I will tell you this. Um, make me... I will tell you this. Give me an intellect roll. Um, and I will let you basically allow to try to use your kind of understanding of tactics and time to see if you can interpret um, uh, her actions. So I'm going to say your challenge is going to be a seven. Excellent. The... I will spend one, Bene. This is the first time you've worked together. It is a nine on the die. I rolled a ten. Excellent. Okay, so you, uh, your uh, strategy, your experience begins to kick in, and you uh, wait patiently as this horrifying thing begins floating towards you. Allegra, you see the same thing. What do you do? Allegra, um, I think, is not going to take an offensive action just off. She is in classically someone who analyzes and and tries to assess the state of play before taking any rash action. Um, but what she will do uh, is cast uh, one of her Vance spells, which is an alpha spell called Chesnor's Twin, level two. Uh, an identical fragile copy of me steps out of me. It shatters into glassy shards if struck. I gain an enhancement to my movement or physicality pool as the copy or if the copy helps me dodge an attack, boost over a wall, etc., It lasts until the enhancement is spent and shatters if it travels more than a short distance from me. So the goal of this is effectively, you know, to create a copy of myself that could potentially be a target for this thing, more readily visible than myself. Okay, excellent. So what is the level of that spell? Two. Okay, that's two. You are going to, at some point, this thing is going to uh, basically uh, n- going to make an attack, you are going to basically f- need to fool it. Yeah. Um, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a card for that. Uh, okay, this actually seems fairly fortuitous. Uh, the Hunter, which is the Adept of Notions, Cats, Clocks, and Wind. Um, meanings, Nature, Death, Conflict, Survival, Seeking a Goal. Um, the Hunter is a lonely soul pursuing prey with a dogged tenacity. Their single-minded dedication is why they are successful in tracking, confronting, and killing their prey. The hunter knows better than anyone it is kill or be killed in the harsh world we live in. Uh, This is the perfect card for one pursuing a goal. The hunter suggests that vigilance and persistence will win the day. However, if one isn't actively seeking something, this card turn can portend conflict and even death. Important events occur, NPC, trouble. 
uh, a NPC is single-mindedly pursuing a goal. So what is happening is the adept um, that you've drawn, your patience um, comes into play, your strategy as you are watching this thing, and this thing is moving towards you very doggedly, very determinedly. It is ready uh, to attack you, um, which I think means it is the opponent's, the opposition's turn. So, uh, the very first thing that's going to happen, um, one, there are going to be two attacks against uh, Irreverent Mott. Um, one is going to be made at a, uh, uh, a disadvantage of negative three to its venture. Um, so you are going to need to make a dodge roll of three. Okay. The, uh, the other one is going to very uh, grievously wounded is still going to try and attack you. Uh, and that one is going to be a six. That okay, you need. Uh, I'll do the, the first one. So this is the first with the dodge roll of three. I have a plus two to my dodge. Um, uh, handily, uh, it was, yeah, yeah up a three on the dice, but with the plus to that, it's yeah. the, it's, it meets beats. Mm -hmm. Um, the other one's six. Mm -hmm. right, plus uh, okay, four is the number. Five on the dice. Excellent. Okay, so you handily, it's, uh, it's just kind of, I think you are taken aback a moment by, uh, seeing that familiar figure, but then your kinesthetic reflexes, your muscle memory kicks back in as you see the strike incoming. The one sniper or marksman, whatever it is, swinging its cannon wildly at you and you just effortlessly dodging out of the way. Um, I will say at this point, the lone, um, uh, the very lone, uh, I'm going to do one quick thing. The lone squad member that remains now uh, attempts to attack you in a desperate last stand. Now, normally this something, I will tell you this, why don't you go ahead and make me a interaction roll, uh, Okris, as this thing um, begins moving towards you. For the record, I have a Vex in interaction. Okay. Oh dear. From, so, my, uh, from my fancy sledgehammer. Excellent. And this off-putting thing, um, this is basically going to be like an insight roll. So I want you to go ahead and uh, take that Vex, so minus one to your venture first. Uh, oh, uh, I have two interaction, Bene. I don't know why. <laughs> um, that was an interesting choice when I built them. Um, <laughs> so uh, I will, can I off-put that by using um, a, uh, a, a, a Bene? You may, you most certainly may. So a straight roll? Uh, yes. And you are going to try to beat, uh, you are trying to beat a six. Okay. That's... Shit. That's a, uh, that's a zero, aka a ten on the dice. But okay. A zero. You are, you are just focused on ending this thing as it steps forward, and, uh, it just kind of, uh, takes this loping strike against you. Uh, I need you to make a dodge roll. Your target is a, uh, six. You ah the only res uh, the only defensive skill I don't have. Uh, <laughs> can I use a uh, mm, can I use a sortilege to uh, to do this? Absolutely. You may roll right. two dice. My harder to read dice will be my sortilege dice. Excellent. Don't get uh, a zero. You got a flux, didn't you? What if I got? What happens if you get? two fluxes. Did you roll two zeros? But it's not, you weren't rolling magic, so I don't think it stacks this way. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, you, if you are rolling, like, let's say you have one physical die and then you have two magic die and both of the magic die get zeros, then you're in trouble. I um, hate this. <laughs> okay, so this thing still impacts you. It is going to do its level in damage to you. Uh, which in this case, uh, you are going to actually, I am going to, uh, so you're going to take your level in damage, uh, its level in damage. So six points of damage uh, as it lays a hand on you. Um, the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say for your flux effect, I got to pick a good one. Hold on. Uh, it's minor magical effects. Uh, okay. Ooh. All right. Yeah, okay. So this thing touches your mask. 
um, and it begins as it touches it you feel the magic worked into the mask itself and into kind of like your armor as it were uh begin interacting terribly with whatever this thing is you remember the one private that you sent to their ending you felt essentially that um they remember the very first thing they said is don't let it touch you and the thing that you feel as it touches the mask is an overwhelming feel uh feeling of agony uh as this thing um tries to um basically um whatever its touch does it seems to augment uh a feeling of suffering and pain however interacting with the mask it superheats it um so at that point um the mask it Ooh. as it kind of pulls uh it begins to warp the mask and you uh you force your head to shrug out of it as it's ruined by this thing's touch. What does Oak What does Okris I'm gonna call this a GM shift as well for despair. Uh what does Okris look like underneath the mask? A fucking ow. B um well I think uh here's an important qu question. I guess uh do the uh do how are we viewing this from um, we being our primary PCs in this animus-like record? Are we loose forming? Are we individually seeing things? Uh, I would say, well, that is, hmm. Because we're, we're, we, got, we got two layers of meta here now. So two things, uh, flux happened and we also had a GM shift. So I need to draw a card and I can probably answer that question. Is everybody okay with me making that decision? Yes. Hell yes. Um, in that in that interim while you're doing that, um, there's a, a brief flash of like blacklit light uh, up near Mott as I just gained uh, uh, I just gained an enhancement die as uh, Okris gained despair. Excellent. Well done. I love that. Uh, <laughs> these characters, guys. Okay. <laughs> All right. This one is Sealed Door, uh, Secrets, Ravens, Books, and Flame, Delay, Inaction, Barriers, Unchanging. The door holds more promise than a wall, but a sealed door is perhaps worse for the egress it suggests and then denies. The barrier prevents us from moving forward. It is delay, wasted time, a failed attempt. Still, a door with a keyhole suggests both the existence of a key and something valuable on the other side. Of course, the door in the family of secrets is sealed. It keeps the secrets safe. The implication, of course, is that great discoveries lie on the other side if you can only get there. This is really good. Okay, so I'm gonna say this. There That's is a... my other PCs family. Yeah, it. Uh, the color that is empowered is silver. The color that is weakened is gold. Um, I will tell you this. I think that it is appropriate for me to say that what ends up happening is that um, I think all of you are experiencing individual experiences so nobody sees the face under the mask except for Wait. twig um well this is upsetting quite upsetting in fact uh twig is looking at their own face but very um but like Hmm, looks kind of ragged, in fact. It looks like whatever had damaged this mask pri pr previously, there is a scattering of um, what appears to be like pock marks and burnt, like burned scar tissue. And uh, uh, I believe the left side of their face actually has a ragged hole in the cheek. Hmm. Um, it's, but the the eyes are wrong and the hair doesn't isn't changing colors, but that's their face. Yeah, and that's the thing is all of those burns and pockmarks, whatever they are, they were not left by the mask burning. They have been there for quite a while. Um, so, okay, uh, so that happens. Uh, you may spend uh, physicality bene as per normal if you want to negate three of those points of damage, but you will take a wound. Okay, so uh, for the record, I I had a I had a whatever the bonus to my physicality is, so I'm now down to my regular physicality. Okay, and do you also have any armor? I don't 
think so, actually. I didn't take any physical. I have, I can't, I could. <laughs> well, we're just gonna call it a wound for now. We'll see. All right, sound good. Well, we'll, we'll figure that out later. Okay. Um, um, so I have a wound. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Cool, yeah. cool, 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 cool. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, so yeah, this thing, um, it's infuriating as this thing has taken your means of uh, kind of subterfuge. And now it's the Helminth's turn. So let me go ahead and decide what it is going to do. Um, okay, it is driven by murder. Um, how close are both of you? Uh, you guys were, it's coming from far away, um, so it is going to keep moving, um, towards each of you, and I think it's going to, yeah, it's got plus two to dodge, normally it would be pretty stealthy, that's why you didn't see it, okay, so it is going to move towards, um, the thing that just cast a spell. Uh, so in this case, it is going to uh, move towards uh, Allegra. Allegra, um, I need you to roll to see if you can confuse this thing. Question, does the fact that there is an exact copy of me confuse it at all? Or is that, it, it seems to ignore that? Um, I, think, I think it it is moving with a purpose. Um, I think you could probably perceive kind of what its intention is. Um, or you could, uh, yeah, make me an intellect roll. Uh, yeah. Your challenge is going to be nine. Actually, mm -hmm. s actually seven, because um, okay. that's only for its defenses. Cool, 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 cool. Um, intellect roll, is this to do with magical knowledge or institutionalized knowledge in any way? Or is this because it's something to do with the enemy? We just don't have a lot of that knowledge, so it wouldn't apply. It's going to be the latter. This is probably the first time you've seen anything like this. Okay, cool. So straight roll then. Actually, no, I will pump one Bene into it. So I'll put in an intelligence or an intellect Bene into it. Okay, cool. Ah, that is a seven on the die. So plus one, eight. Excellent. Okay, so what is happening is it is seeming to be confused, um, but or it, it, it's kind of moving uh, in the general direction of you and your doppelganger. But what is happening is it is going to, um, it, you, I will tell you this, with that seven, you can see these kind of like wriggling worm-like appendages kind of lashing out with the teeth. Um, you realize these things look incredibly sharp, um, as if it doesn't believe that your defenses will, um, save you. Mm, okay. So, okay. So it is moving now, uh. I need you to make a uh, challenge uh, roll of nine to see if you can confuse it as it is trying to withstand the magical confusion that's conveys. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. Would this qualify as like an interaction, Bene, that I could put into this because I am trying to confuse it? Totally. I'm going to say that. Okay. Yes. Bad. Then I will do that. Yeah, okay, so that that meets. So it's eight on the dice plus one, nine. Okay, you watch as this thing's tendrils slash through your um, glass doppelganger and shatter it outright. Um, uh, this thing, it slices, you see whatever armor this thing conveyed, it slices straight through it. It seems to almost ignore it. So it's incredibly um, lucky that you managed to um, cast that spell. Um, I will say this, um, that consciousness that is behind you, that feeling of something looking through your eyes, um, there is a sense of urgency about it as you remember Allegra's spell. Um, mm. But you may take your, uh, you've already taken your action. Uh, mm. That was the Helminth's turn. It's going to be back at the top of the round. Um, okay. Well, I get to Actually, do Actually, you this... get your hold action yeah. there, and Yeah. What do you do? So, I think Kieran moves forward and finds one of the, the tentacles that just slashed through this doppelganger and reaches out and touches this creature and uses uh, his forte ability, Frozen in Time. Uh huh. A target I touch is frozen in time. They cannot act at all, even mentally, but they cannot be harmed or affected either as they are outside the normal flow of time. This is a gold um, feature, so it's diminished. Okay. 
It's a level five plus one die. I can spend one sorcery to try and boost this. Is that how that works? Yeah, totally. Okay. So I will tell you the way. So the way you're going to succeed now, um, if you touch this thing, you are going to need to hit a target of. It's got two to withstand, um, or is it resist? Um, yeah, I'm going to say it's withstand. So you are going to need to um, hit a three on both dice. Ah, uh, it's a three and a one. Oh, okay. So I will say it is a mixed success. Um, essentially what happens, uh, and is it the magical die that gets the one or the, uh, uh, or the three? Um, we'll say it will say it's the magical die that gets the one I need to roll, pick dice better. Okay, no worries. So the, um, as you kind of, uh, touch this thing, you feel again, your, um, instinct to put, pull this thing out of time as you have done to so many other combatants in your past. Mm -hmm. um, you've felt how effective this is against a variety of entities, um, but nothing is quite like this, as you can feel the searing hatred of this creature um, almost resist your touch, as, mm -hmm. if, uh, as if out of spite, out of sheer um, unadulterated hatred, that it will not let you move it in such a fashion. Um, so that is your held action. We are going to go back to the top of the round. Um, I will say, uh, Okris, you are up. This thing just pulled off your fucking mask and it hurt you. What are you going to do? Well, first, um, first and foremost, uh, so this is the beginning of round three, mm -hmm. which means that crescendo, crescendo has hit the point where I take two actions. Um, both at plus one venture, as does the irreverent Mott. Um, so, uh, quick question. Um, I believe the, uh, just just so I can plan this properly, um, in Invisible Sun, you can use a action to refresh a pool. Is that correct? That is correct. Well, I'm not going to fucking do that right now. <laughs> I'm going to hit this thing with uh, my, uh, with, uh, with my hammer, which... Okay. Um, as you, as you see, uh, you see Okris just kind of reach, uh, kind of uh, grab their hammer, t choke up on the grip a little bit, mm -hmm. and just um, just bring it crashing down. I think as the as the as the head of this thing, it's it's kind of funny. It looks almost like the most stereotypical sledgehammer ever. Mm -hmm. It's a functional tool. It's used. It's a like a, a like a hickory ha uh, ha haft, um, you know a little bit dinged up and dented with scratches and whatnot, and a well-worn, well-used um, hammer, uh, the, the actual head, the maul of this thing. And uh, and you can see etched into the side, it just says, in, what, in like kind of rough handwriting, it just says, clarity, as I am going to fucking wreck this thing. Okay. Uh, I hope. What, what is the, what's the base level of your uh, item? Uh, the base level of my, I have no idea. <laughs> Let's say uh, it, it is it is it is a uh, enkindled sledgehammer. Yeah, so I'm gonna say three, maybe four. Three. Uh, okay. three. Yeah, let's start with three. Um, okay. So you have four. You need to hit two twice. Okay. I would like to use sortilege on this. Okay. Um, I do have a bonus to my venture. Okay. Um, so I need to hit. Does that does that does that uh, target number include the bonus to venture? Uh, yes. It, it, well, yeah. Basically, anything you add. Remember, you're adding to your total venture. Uh, it'll be double sixes on the dice. Nice. Okay. Um, how do you end this thing? So, um, I, with everything that I have. Um, so I, uh, yeah. You see, Ochres just swing this like uh, a kind of a grimace of rage across their face. Um, like the uh, the bloodless uh, eyes just kind of squinted in effort, and you see, um, I think you see lightning crackle up the haft and um, start to uh, build on on the head of this hammer as it's swinging, and as it hits, uh, uh, one of my uh, changery secrets takes effect, and that will be uh, thirteen points of damage. Excellent. Um, yeah. You again, this thing. It, it, just uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, I don't want to cut you off there. Oh, I think that this is a uh, this is uh, this is probably a little bit gorier. The previous ones were a lot more like shock waves and disintegration. This is literally it explodes into chunks <laughs> as the force of this is just uh, just 
like like it's just too much force concentrated on a single point mm -hmm. um with oh. lightning for extra zip zap um <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, um, and for my second action, I would like to, <laughs> since it's now dead, I'd like to refresh my uh, sorcery pool because okay. I am out. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, so um, what happens when you make that strike? You fear, you hear the sound of uh, thunder as if in time to your crescendo. Um, and uh, the sound reverberates uh, for a while and there is a dread sense of unease as you do this. Um, okay. Can uh, I run towards the tower? Oh yeah, you have your movement. Go ahead. Yeah, I would like to move as far as I can to get towards, is there a door or a entrance at the base? I mean, that's, I don't really care. I'll make one if I need to, but. Uh, there is a ruined archway. As you uh, start moving towards the tower, you realize that whatever this is, it used to be essentially a bell tower. Um, that said, as you kind of make your way in, um, it seems to have disintegrated somewhat in uh, the uh, uh, the war or the conflict, and it feels like some of the bricks are beginning to wander away from their normal structure, and all of the steps float um, with some irregularity in um, step patterns. Um, okay, so that is your action, your turn. Um, Mot, uh, you've got two of these things. You've cracked one really hard. The other one's blind. What do you do? Um, okay. First thing I'm going to do is I want to kind of duck under both of them, line them up for a shot, and Sparta kick them off the tower. Okay. Um, <laughs> I will tell you this. Um, because these things are um, individuals, I would say this is, you're going to need two successes, um, and I will add one to your venture to represent both of them. Only one because the other one's blind. Okay. Um, so um, that is going to mean that you need to give me a seven uh, twice. So basically add your venture and we'll subtract it from that challenge. All right. I've got a few things that, that boost that. Um, so it is, in fact, it is a four that I need because of my uh, secret soul. Okay. So you need, you have fours. Don't forget you get one for um, crescendo. And then so. There's a three that I need. Yeah. In order a, to do this. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a three. It's a three that you need. <laughs> oh, yeah. That'll be an eight and a nine. Okay. So um, describe what it looks like as you line up um, the shot. Uh, I think I like duck and like, let's, they, they were just coming at me. I, I, I duck and wolf between both of them. And I think like almost like a black liquid, I just sort of appear now in front of them as their backs or are towards this like crumbling precipice uh, of this, of this uh, ruined uh, tower. Uh, and it's just like with the full force of like the shadowy might of like nightmares and flames behind me, just uh, I hit them like a demonic freight train. Excellent. I love it. Um, I will, as these things fall, um, you hear the chitterous cry, uh, the chittering cry of the blinded one as it falls off the tower, both of them to their death. Um, and uh, for my next action, mm -hmm. I will refresh my sorcery. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Good thing. Um, so... That takes us back to uh, Allegra and Kieran. Kieran, what's your uh, next step? Uh, it is a long step. Um, Kieran will long step and move a very long distance instantaneously and get to the center of okay. this place. Okay. Uh, pew. Yeah. Uh, pew, pew. Uh, the t I believe the technical term is BAMF. It is um, BAMF. Yeah. So you BAMF to, I'm assuming, this like towards the munition. Yep. Okay. All right. So this thing, as you get close to it, I'd like you to make a uh, perception or intellect roll, whichever kind of makes sense. Sorry, th this thing is sending out tendrils and it's still in the center or it has moved away and I have gone behind it because that the latter was my intention. Uh, I will say, okay, so we'll act on your intention. <laughs> yeah, so um, you're basically trying to get behind this thing? Yes. Okay, so what are what are you intending to do now that you've done this? Um, take cover behind the munition. So I imagine that camera came up and moved forward. So I'm gonna be on the other side of the munition as this thing. 
Okay. You, uh -oh. Okay. All, All right. right. So I need you to make me a uh, level ten resistance roll. As okay. So uh, as this this thing seems to be, actually, hold on. You've used the seam ripper. Mm-hmm. So I think what it's going to do instead is it's going to lash out at a tendril with a tendril. Okay. Uh, so I need you to actually um, make a roll of eight. Uh, this and is this a will dodge roll. Dodge roll of eight. I can spend a movement bene. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'm looking for a five on the die to successfully dodge with my skill. Okay. Ugh, that's a four. Okay. Uh, this thing, um, it senses where you are, but it is still kind of rooted into the battlefield. Um, it is only going to do three points of damage to you. Um, okay. but, but it is now aware of you. Mm -hmm. um, and physicality one for one to negate a injury? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Or not one for one for an injury, one for one for a wound. Oh, so okay. you can, you negate all three. Okay. By spending one. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me see. Okay, so Allegra, um, you just watched uh, Kieran once again, a uh, long step away. Uh, that same uh, ability that you appropriated, um, he used again. Uh, so what do you do? Um, so what did the creature do in response to this? Um, as it... Um, did it like turn and go after him? Um, well, as it touched him... Um, it you could you could feel a radiating seething hatred. Um, I think it's just whatever it is. It's just it's like that uneasy feeling, the hair on the back of your neck raising. Um, it, but I think what happens is if it was about to go for him, um, it lost the interest at the moment he stepped away. Okay, and so it doesn't really. It hadn't noticed that he'd gone to the middle of the yeah. munition. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, actually, that, uh, that is a very good question. Um, uh, Kieran, do me a favor. Roll uh, one to your uh, dodge. Uh, roll. Give me a movement roll to see if you do that stealthily. Again, your target is a seven. Oh, to see if I do something stealthily? Yeah. You got it, bro. <laughs> Sorry, we'll get right back. Uh, that's a 13. Yeah, you uh, effortlessly, this thing doesn't has no idea where you went. Um, okay. Fucking what? <laughs> so take back that uh, physicality that I lost. Um. Well. No. Oh, actually. Yeah. Oh my God. That's right. So neither the munition nor uh, the um, the helmet saw you. You're fine. Oh, so the mu the munition was attacking yeah. me. The munition. Oh fuck. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. So I'm. But I. Just to clarify, you are behind the munition, right? That was mm -hmm. your plan. Okay. Yeah, putting the munition between myself and the and the hate cyst. Okay, or whatever hate cyst spawn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Allegra, um, right? Your action again. Sorry. Cool. I am going to cast a spell called Vitanda, uh, which is level four plus one die, and actually happens to be a blue spell. Um, and because of an object of power I have called a blue heart, uh, I automatically get plus one to that spell in action. addition. Um, so Ventanda is one nearby being can no longer perform one specific action that I name. In the case of the spell, the specificity is important. Make melee attacks, cast spells, speak, or move from where they stand are all viable actions to name. Take offensive action, breathe, think, or move a muscle are all too broad. There is a depletion check each round on this. Color is blue. Um, so what Excellent. I'm going to do is say that this creature cannot make melee attacks. Excellent. Well chosen. Uh, you did cast a spell, so I'm going to cast... I'm going to draw another card. Uh, ooh. The Incriminating Skull. Disaster, discovery, evidence, connections, friends and family. The skull is uncovered, revealing a long-buried wrong. It is evidence of a crime. However, the skull was once a person, and that person's family and friends miss them. They wonder what happened to them, and discovering the remains of the victim actually brings them comfort and closure on the situation. Um, tells us that there is a deeper, darker meaning to the manner at hand, a presages failure, particularly being caught at wrongdoing. However, if the context is right, it might also simply indicate that a friend or relative, particularly one that has long been estranged, is involved in some way. Um, actually, so this is what you glean as you cast uh, your spell on this creature. Um, what ends up happening is the spell... Um, remind me, uh, what's the level of the spell? 
Uh, it's technically the spell is four, but because I have this object of power, it's five. Okay, so do me a favor. Uh, roll uh, two dice, and uh, you're going to need to hit a two on each die. All right. That is a six and a nine. Excellent. Okay, so what ends up happening is you do this, um, you can again feel that seething, writhing hatred, um, but there is something there that's even more distressing, which the thing that you realize is you you recognize the uniform that is wearing. It was previously a Vance. Okay. And uh, you just hear it uh, just muttering and angry. Um, as you look at it, it begins uh, to um, just speak menacingly because it can no longer take an attack against you. Uh, you hear it say, Is that what they teach? Postulants now? Is that what you'll do? Sit there and be defensive? And it's literally just, it's, it, it can't attack you, and it's just trying to vociferate how much it hates and wants to kill you. Mm -hmm. um, do I get a, do I get a response? Um, you may totally take a response. I think Allegro's gonna look up at it coolly, um, horrified, of course, by what it is, uh, or what she's realized that it is. Um, but we'll look for whatever might resemble eyes to make eye contact and go, I'm not a postulant, I'm a magister. Quite, quite a difference. And one might say that the offensive action is particularly brutish as a first port of call. This type of action restricts what you can do, which you might agree is more effective. It begins hissing at you. Um, okay. Uh, I am going to do one other thing. Um, there is beginning to, you hear over the rooftops, a chittering. Um, as, uh, from some distance away, as you cannot really tell where it's coming from, um, but whatever it is, it's almost in response to that crescendo that Okris cast. Um, Okris, it is your turn. Um, I would like to, uh, we are now in, um, so we're now in round four, I believe, which, um, means that, uh, it, that, Nothing changes until round six. Okay. Um, at which, uh, in terms of crescendo. Um, so, uh, booking up the stairs, we're going to clear the tower. Um, and uh, I don't know what whatever Mott's doing up there. Um, is there, like, is this a straight up and down? Uh, I will say that this is kind of spiraling. Oh, um, oh sorry. I, 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 are there other levels? Is what I was, uh, what I meant to ask before I forget how words work. It's it's a straight bell tower. I will say, however, when it comes to levels, it's as though there are these open portico kind of uh, balconies uh, at, at several intervals. I'd say there's about three flights. If you're very fast, you might make it up in um, uh, quick succession. And I say flights, but they're very long flights. Um, uh, do I don't see any enemies. Uh, I will actually, I almost want to make you make an intellect roll. Um, actually, no, um, make a perception roll. This is going to be, um, you can pump this with sorcery or you can pump this with, um, perception. With Bene or perception? Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, or with sorcery or perception. Sortilage or perception? Uh, I'll sorcery. Sorcery. Um, I will leave my sorcery alone. I will, um... Uh, do a perception bene, um, so which means I'm rolling one dice. Mm -hmm. um, that'll be a seven total. Okay. Six. You feel two endings uh, at the base of the tower. Very sudden, very quickly. At the, at the top of the tower? At the base. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. They were yeeted. <laughs> yeet! <laughs> Death by yeet. <laughs> uh, what do you do? Well, they were endings. That's not my problem right now. Um, I think uh, you probably see, uh, I, like, I, if if the camera was following Ogris, um, which I'm sure it is, as they're pumping their leg, uh, pumping their legs, running up these stairs, just getting in that good, good P90X workout. <laughs> um, 
I, I'd like to make it to the top. If I don't see any enemies, then my objective is to clear the tower. As if you use your entire action plus your movement, you can totally get to the top. Which uh, leaves me with one action. Uh, yes, it does. Uh, I'd like to get to the top of the tower. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you have one action left. You see um, Mott um, just very fluidly moving uh, and then kind of uh, coming I don't know, like, Mott, what does it look like when you've just defeated these two things? Um, I think, like, he's not resting on laurels. He's probably turning around, probably having heard the chittering. Um, and, uh, yeah, Ogres, you're going to have to tell me what it is you fear because you're seeing it. I, uh, you see, oh, oh I'm seeing it as a nightmare. That's all oh, I'm radiating is, right now because I've probably... been firing off so much ammo. <laughs> <laughs> that is very odd. So this is going to be a very weird one. Uh, what does it look, what does absolute nothingness look like? I look like a black void. Like you might be able to see a little bit of uh, Mott's mask, but other than that, just radiating off of him then is the nothingness, is the abyss. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, Gavrielle, you see. Who am I? Oh, what? <laughs> Gavrielle sees Opris. Nope. Oh, oh, my God. I forgot that we were not, that we were like an anonymous thing. You scared me half to death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gabrielle sees Ogris. Just for um, uh, for clarity. <laughs> internal uh, sc- internal off screen screaming. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ogris, what's your second action? Uh, can I see any enemies at within very far range? Uh, yes. Uh, I will say. Within very far range, you can easily see the munition and uh, the helmets. So, important question, Zach. I have a power. Uh, I have a. I have an. I have a object of power. Uh-huh. My thief of voices, which again, uh, for those of you uh, that uh, may have forgotten or didn't join us for our first uh, episode of the uh, the interlude, the war report, uh, Okris is wearing uh, half gloves, and notably on the on the uh, I believe if I said right side, but I could be wrong. It's on the right side. Um, on their uh, forefinger and thumb, there are two almost thimble-like objects that seem to be quite firmly attached. Um, can I use, when I steal a voice, can I use that to cast a pumped spell or does it have to be just at the base level? Uh, I will let you cast a pump spell. Okay. Um, cool. I would like to do that. Um, and the other question is how close is, um, Allegra to these creatures? Um, you are, you see, uh, from a very far distance, you see, uh, her having what appears to be a leisurely conversation with this thing as it seems to just vibrate with anger. And Uh, the munition? uh, The munition is swelling and undulating. Um, I will say that you cannot make from this distance out uh, Kieran Von Mellis. All right. Well, I'm going to interrupt that conversation um, by removing their ability to talk. Uh, so let's see here. This is, uh, let me scroll on down here to this friendly neighborhood thing. This is a uh, Thief of Voices, which is a gray. Uh, it's plus one dice, level six ability. Mm-hmm. Um, what do I need to roll on this? Uh, I think that you're going to need to roll uh, three on each die. Ooh. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, am I allowed to pump objects of power? Uh, yeah, I will say that you can spend a sorcery. Uh, can I do a sword of witch? Uh, that will, I will say that you can, if you pump it, you can choose either sword of witch or, uh, Bene. Uh, if you roll, uh, if you use a sword of witch, you may roll three dice. Okay. That's, yeah, I, I'd like to roll three dice as opposed to spend sorcery. I'm already spending sorcery. Just remember which ones are magical. Holy shit, that's so good. That's nine, nine, eight. Woo-hoo! Excellent. Nice. All right. So give me two depletion rolls for your item. All right. Uh, Fucking hell! Where was all these earlier? That's a nine and a nine. Okay, so the object does not deplete. Um, What you need to do then, um, this thing, um, Allegra, as it is hissing and angry at you, uh, you just hear the volume uh, of it just suddenly cut out, and it grows mute. So now this thing cannot attack you and it is completely mute. So if it was going to do anything that would use its voice, 
uh, it cannot. Okay. Okay. All right. So that is Okris. That's your turn. Uh, no, I still have another. I, I, um, oh yeah, I have because uh, I moved to get up there. So I guess that's my turn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I think you literally see the. Mo it's the most obnoxious thing. Yeah, Mod. Um, uh, uh, you see. Okris just stride right past you up to the edge of this precipice and just kind of looking out just kind of um with uh with uh, a sledgehammer over one uh over kind of cocked jauntily over the shoulder just go there's like a little flash of gray magic love it okay so uh the reverend mott your turn you've just yeeted these things off you've been hearing the chittering um, as you realize, it's not only in response to the crescendo, it is also in response to uh, that falling um, enemy uh, as it began making uh, its kind of pleading last final death cry. Um, yeah. Um, do I see any more enemy combatants or am I just hearing like the chittering sounds? Uh, you are hearing the chittering sounds, but uh, why don't you go ahead and give me a perception roll? Yeah, because this is going to determine which direction I, I sort of move in. Oh, that's an eight on the dice. Okay. As uh, you are listening, these things, you remember watching their patrol and how they would basically enter through apertures in reality. And that basically, it's almost like the audio is happening in a graduated revolution. Like, suddenly it's 500 meters away, suddenly it's 400, suddenly it's 350. Um, it's seeming to come at regular intervals as if they are traveling towards uh, the area. Okay. Uh, Mott takes kind of a step towards uh, Okris, just still uncomfortably for, for you, radiating the void, uh, but is just like, the void is now speaking to you. <laughs> um, and just... This one does. I think we're going to have some company. Uh, I've been, I've been I've been watching you, and I think that uh, you can handle crowds. Um, I'm more suited for a one-on-one -on -one fight. And he's looking down at the at the at uh, the Sispan that's engaging uh, Allegra. Uh, he's like, I think you can handle him. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, and uh, without saying anything, Mott dive bombs off of the tower with uh, the aid of the ring, mm -hmm. um, and is just flying at top speed towards the 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 um the sispon mm -hmm. um and is literally gonna come in for just like i just realized that i i the vibe i'm giving off right now is very like black lantern ish so that's exactly what it is like it's just like i'm gonna come in and i'm queuing up uh, two things yeah. really fast you have a plus two now because it's round four on what? all of your everything you do Everything you do has a plus two, not a plus devastating. one. Devastating. No. This is a devastating hit that's about to happen because I'm coming in for a stunning strike. Excellent. All right. Uh, you are going to need to hit a nine uh, as this thing. Let me double check, actually. I think it's. Are you uh, sure? Yeah. Because we've got the two for that. So now it's seven. And then I have my plus three to that. So now it's four. Okay. <laughs> So um, normally the challenge is nine to hit this thing twice, but if you exceed the challenge, you just automatically hit. Yeah, okay, all right. So <laughs> yeah, you r just tell me what this ballet of death looks like <laughs> as, you, as you hit this um, thing. I gotta do some math, one second. Um, so I'm coming in, oh God, there's a, it's for my stunning strike, it's a plus one die to that too. What does that mean? Uh, you just roll twice. Uh, well, actually, if it's uh, it just means it's magically enhanced. Um, Yikes. Yeah. So um, so your telestic strike actually. Oh, Boise. Uh, okay, well. here we go. Um, it's five <laughs> to the damage two with the stunning strike because that's the level that I'm that uh, my forte is activated at, or does my terror strike just my, is my damage for that? Uh, add it all together. Add it all together. <laughs> okay, one second. The, Math is my favorite part, viewers at home. So, and I gave myself a lot to do for that. So we've got seven, 10, uh, 12. Okay. Uh, so th yep, that, it, that will in fact be uh, 12 points of damage launching uh, through the sky as uh, Mott just swoops from the tower, careening like fist out at the creature. Uh, and I think Allegra, like you blink and this thing is like into a wall. Yeah, exactly. Like, I think just like, 
I think when you impact it basically um it's kind of like when um I think it's like in Akira or something whenever this thing gets hit by a laser um and just like that part is just missing um that so I will tell you this actually um I will say the most disconcerting nightmarish thing about this thing gets completely destroyed uh which is this thing no longer has a top half um, and now it's just the dangling set of legs and the lower torso as, uh, and I think part of that is also blown off below the knee. Uh, so this thing is literally, uh, it's there. I think these things are ululating and crying, realizing they cannot, uh, actually act on their, uh, murderous inclination. Yeah, they are stunned for a round. Um, and th this is so funny to me, just based on Allegra's, like, previous statements about, I don't need to be offensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and you and you see precisely why. Um, um uh, but I'm I'm not done because I have two actions still. Is that correct? That is true. Um, is this thing like I stunned it? There's no need. Like I don't need to like come in it and hit it twice. Y'all can have some fun. Uh, but what I will do because now I'm down here with the big boys. Um, I like. I'm fresh off of like uppercutting this thing into half oblivion. Um, Mott slams their fists together. Um, and the nightmare, that, that coalescing aura of nightmares starts to solidify. Uh, almost like the void itself is like giving this extra layer of iron, like dark armor around them. Uh, and I cast use my fear, which gives me plus one to my defenses. Excellent. Well done. Yeah, this thing uh, looks like it's on its last leg. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and you have uh, solidified into this defensive nightmare. Um, a hell knight, if you will. Um, okay, so uh, going and doing that, uh, that is the two tanks turn. Uh, Kieran, you're up. What are you doing? Uh, Kieran takes a close look at what is in front of him, the okay. munition. So um, I will um, go ahead and make me go. Why don't you go ahead and make me an intellect roll? Um, your challenge is going to be a 10. If you hit that, you are going to get varying degrees of information depending on how well you beat or uh, fail to beat the threshold. Okay, I'll put a Ben A to that. So I'm only looking at a nine. Okay. That's a one. Ooh. Okay, so this thing is... You have worked with many different strange materials. Uh, you have worked with cloth. You have worked with uh, as something as simple as cloth and other things as powerful as um, leaves of powerful emotions uh, that you can work into fabric. This is unlike anything you have seen. It is... Uh, it doesn't... Whatever it is, it seems to be almost like a metastasizing growth, like a cancerous uh, thing. And you realize, like, whatever this thing is, it's fairly organic, it's incredibly large, and that is when you begin to see the seam of its mouth open, and you begin to see rows and rows of teeth, as now um, it is uh, just beginning to cry out. And that is when you begin hearing the chittering noise, which is now obvious to uh, you, regardless of uh, where you would be on the battlefield. Um, so that is what you notice. Would you like to take an action in addition? Uh, I will take my uh, extra night only action rest and refresh my sorcery pool um, and consider how to get a sample of this thing or maybe disable it before we need to bug out. Yeah, I was going to say you have uh, this thing has many appendages and tentacles. Um, that is I will say that that is something you notice as well. Uh, it just mm -hmm. depends on what piece you want to get. Mm -hmm. My, I, and I still feel carry. somewhat well hidden. Uh, yeah, I will say this. The thing doesn't have eyes. Mm hmm. So you feel re you not you're not sure what this thing's qualities are with that perception roll, but you still feel like you are very uh, a very stealthy um, uh, uh, opposition to this thing. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, I guess that's me. Okay. Certainly not moving. All right, so uh, Allegra, your turn. You literally have seen um, 
Mott just completely obliterate this thing and armor itself, uh, armor himself rather against it. Um, this thing uh, looks like it is um, barely alive. Um, I will also say, however, um, that both of you would, all of you would notice at this point, uh, with the exception of uh, Okris, as you're still in the tower, um, there are a, uh, there is the debris of the um, battle that preceded this one. You see that there are a number of bodies scattered, uh, many of them uh, belonging to the army of Satteri, formerly. Allegra, what do you do? Well, first I'm going to do my depletion roll on my uh, Ventanda spell. Okay. And that's a five, so okay. it does not deplete. Excellent. Um, so yeah, she's basically just going to look at this thing, what remains of it, uh, and say, come now, Vance, that you once were. Your voice has been taken. You cannot attack us. You are chaos, we are control, and I'm afraid we put you at a significant disadvantage. <laughs> know when you are beaten. Check. And she will start moving away from the creature towards uh, where Kieran is. It cannot reach out to attack you. It cannot take an offensive action. Uh, it is stunned. You easily move away from it. What do you do? Um, I, can I make it all the way to the center? Because I don't, I'm not, unless I use Kieran's ability, which I'm not going to at this point. Uh, I, I can I th- use my full movement to make it partially. I think you could, uh, with your full movement, I will say that you can make it. Um, okay. That, that said, you are also beginning to hear the chittering around you as it begins to get closer. What do you do? Okay. Um, so I will then use my full movement to get there. Um, what do I see um, in terms you, of the thing in front of me? You may make me a perception roll. I would love to do that. Uh, again, your challenge is going to be overall attack. Okay, um, so that's a seven on the die. Mm. Do you have any uh, additional benefits or um, skills? Uh, I can add a perception bene, but that only gets me to eight. Okay, on an eight, um, I think that you look at this a lot more clinically. Um, you are looking at this from the standpoint of somebody that has probably done a great deal of study in libraries, particularly of creatures, you have probably uh, been to a uh, one of the lectures on the terathology, uh, for instance. Um, you have heard of different uh, creatures that uh, inhabit the actuality. And this thing is very much alive. It is very much something akin to a virus uh, or perhaps even some sort of um, magical disease made manifest. It could be something like partially a demon you, there's a lot of different avenues and approaches you can take, and you begin to remember your mother's work in particular on magical viruses. Um, so as you are um, taking a look at this thing, um, you know for a fact that this is probably one kind of strain of this thing. It probably has very multiple forms, um, and whatever it is, it is what created um, the Helminth that you fought. Uh, and probably mutated the Vance. Uh, you know that right straight away. Um, you also know that it is basically acting as a sort of ge- uh, biological or organic generator, which is beginning to kind of metastasize and kind of spread its tendrils throughout the battlefield. You can see that basically this is a, uh, a kind of reactor, a biological reactor of sorts for it. Okay, do I see any cover? Um, like cover that I could take? Or is this thing very open, like there's no place to hide? This thing left a blast crater, whatever it was. And in this crater, it is fairly open and you've got, you've been having to step over the dendrils. Okay. Um, I think she'll just try to join, well, so she can't see where Kieran is. Is that right, Kieran? Cause you're still hidden? It is, it is night and Kieran is practically invisible. Okay, cool. Um. In that case, I think I will launch my perfidious assault at this thing. Uh, Perfidious assault is a level six spell, uh, plus one die. I gather deceit, mistrust, and unease in my mind and launch it through the noosphere at a thinking being within long range. They suffer mental damage equal to the level of the spell. Color is blue. And actually, I'm going to cast this at level seven because it is a blue spell and I have my blue heart. 
Okay, so I need you to hit a uh, 10 twice. So that blue card is still up as well, I believe. Yeah. So that, okay, so that actually goes eight then. Yeah, so you need to hit two twice to really okay. affect this thing. Cool. That's an eight on the first die and seven on the second. Okay, uh, how much damage does that do? Uh, let's see, it's the level of the spell, so that's eight. Okay, so uh, you managed to do eight points of damage to this thing as it begins, uh, again, ululating and beginning to cry out in pain and wail. And the tendrils begin flailing around uh, Kieran. It is very hard to kind of dodge and weave under this thing. And yeah, is- could, will you allow Kieran to, at, like, right as Allegra started casting a spell, I think she sees two bright blue points of light giving away Kieran's position as his goggles uh, start recording a video of this. Excellent. Okay, so you do this eight points of mental damage uh, with Perfidious Assault. Um, Kieran, the goggles go on, and in response to that cry, you begin hearing the chittering of (laughs) as all of these, um, all of that noise begins to get closer. Uh, and you begin to see an aperture in the air, not far away from the munition, open. Uh, and that is where we're going to take our break. And uh, so, all right. So the aperture opens. Any one of you can make me a perception roll to see what you see through it. Okie dokie. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm way the fuck away, but I see. I Do I have an, more an NA in perception? Yeah, that's a zero. Oh. I'm going to pop a Benny into that. You, I will say this, Kieran, you are so fascinated with what is going on uh, inside this munition and, and this quality of material uh, that you do not, you barely notice the aperture. Sure. You yeah, hear I the got a, I, yeah, I go got ahead. a one, so I'll join you in that, Kieran. I got a six. Excellent. Okay, six and Okris, what did you have? An eight. Just uh, a straight eight on the die. Okay, Okris, I will say that um, because you are in the tower, I'm going to diminish it by one. Um, so basically, seven and a six. Um, both of you see uh, in this kind of a strange landscape past the um, aperture itself, you see a squad of another eight of these creatures begin moving through. These feathered creatures with um, white feathers uh, and a golden uh, extremities that end in kind of these uh, almost uh, talon-like claws. Uh, They all are wearing those same oblong pointed helmets and half masks um, with the same golden light where their eyes should be piercing through this metal, um, almost superheating it, it would seem. Um, So as uh, you make this out, you begin seeing them move with a purpose, marching uh, at a very rapid clip towards the munition. Um, You would say it's probably going to be another round before they get to where you are. Um, I I can fix that. Okay. Um, I will say this. uh, We're starting back with Okris. Okris, you are in the top of the tower. What are you going to do? So I think you see uh, as as uh, in the previous escapades of uh, Mott flying off and being fucking epic, Okris is just standing there at the top of this tower and just kind of go, you just see them raise one hand and just go, oh, f- I used to ride. Um, and then just kind of give, you just, you just see, uh, I mean, for the once you can actually see the facial expression now that the mask is gone and you see a very ravaged version of t- Twig's Base um, on this stranger, and um, and uh, oh, Chris kind of goes, oh fuck, all right. Um, and I, because I have to use it immediately during the next round, I'm going to use my um, free energy um, from stealing that thing's voice uh, to power um, a, a spell with a sound facet that will be dark noise. Um, and I, uh, at, uh, this is going to be pumped by one, thanks to, uh, um, thanks to, uh, the expanded spell. I forget which, uh, which, which, uh, uh, secret it is. Uh, yeah, I think it's elevated spell. Elevated spell. There we go. So, uh, dark noise, uh, is in this situation, it has a range of, uh, and you can tell me if, uh, fuck. 
<laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I made a spreadsheet because this character is so stupid. So that's what I'm looking at over here. So uh, we are, are looking at a range of uh, very long, which I presume I can uh, do. Absolutely. And I'm gonna drop everything in a short range. Um, uh, this uh, this is going to uh, be a, let's see, I'm gonna roll three dice. The venture has plus three. Um, the and ever and then I'm also going to pump this with the vital aspect of sound, which is my other uh, item of power. Mm -hmm. um, and here's a question: Does the crescendo apply to damage? I uh, I will say yes. I will say you can trade uh, level for effect if you want. Um. So like every time you, I think for every bene, it's. You can trade uh, one. Well, the crescendo is a plus two, flat plus two to all my actions. Mm -hmm. Does that include uh, level, uh, or is that? Yeah, that in that would include level, actions, everything. Um, okay, so so I'm going to be rolling three dice, uh, and everything in short range is going to take fourteen points of damage. Okay. And, um, but are are you still on the tower? I'm still on the tower. Okay. I'm literally so you see uh, you see Okris uh, um, kind of point this sledgehammer at this very far distance, and uh, and a like it's just kind of like watching um, the air shatter as uh, just just chaotic spasms of so sonic energy just begin to warp and like nebulously just just just. just uh, permeate the area and you can I think you can literally see these creatures warp and permeate as like the sound seems to be affecting the very nature of reality um and I'm gonna roll my dice oh fuck yes it's a three a seven and a nine with a nine being the uh magic dice excellent uh okay you very handily uh hit this squad as it begins uh and uh exiting through the aperture and you do 14 points of damage, you said? Every round. Woo! Okay. So, um, so yeah, uh, also I just rolled a uh, seven and a three to check for depletion on um, the uh, 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 um, vital aspect of sound. Um, and yeah, so the, it is, uh, let's see, uh, they suffer 14 points of damage per round and for NPCs, all movement actions are hindered by one. Um, and it has a depletion of zero to four. I check each round. Okay, so I need to check something very quickly here. Uh, one second. Pretty sure you broke the game. E maybe. Um, <laughs> so uh, guess you, what? That's not my most broken thing. So you devastate the squad. Um, I think that there is uh, a. F I think that you probably wreck about four of them outright. Um, the other ones are gripping their heads uh, as if uh, and screaming and chittering uh, with the noise. Uh, so from there, what we're going to do then, and let me kind of decrease this music a bit. Um, I think from there. Okay. Yeah. So you do that, and that is uh, is that's my first action. I was gonna say crescendo still in place, so you get another. Oh, uh, we're. Uh, we're in top. We're this is round five of mm. crescendo, which means that uh, get two actions, both with uh, and everything I do with the, during that time has a plus two. Um, round six is when we start taking damage from how fast we are moving. Mm -hmm. um, so I will then. I would like to. Uh, you just see. You see. Uh, just I think for once, uh, the camera actually sees Okris smirk a little bit. Um, normally, this is covered up by a half mask, which has just been burned off their freaking face. And um, just kind of looks down, gives a tiny sigh, and jumps off, launching themselves into into the air and forwards towards the enemy. Okay. So uh, I will say, uh, go ahead, and uh, if you would like to do this magically, um, you can yeah. use a swordledge, and I will say your challenge is going to be an eight, just because you're jumping from the tower. It's okay, a fairly so long distance. Um, that is that is going to be great because that is an eight and a five. The five is on the sword of Lich dice. I don't know if that's relevant. Okay, so I would say, uh, yeah, I think you 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 do your superhero landing. Uh, you end up. Uh, I will say because you got a five. Um, 
No, this isn't a magical uh, act. You still succeeded. So, or this isn't like a magical challenge. Um, you still, you make it down. You kind of, oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Whew. And then uh, just get up and are ready to um, sprint into action. Then I can use my movement to close the range. You can, yes. So yeah, you just see Ogres pounding across this like war-torn um, battlefield. And uh, I would like to run and run straight into the middle of all of these. And then I think you, uh, you see a gleam of conviction in their eyes as I would like to use my forte ability, uh, which is um, uh, the end is near. Excellent. Um, and I am going to uh, put all of my remaining Bene into this, um, which will be, uh, you know, well, no, I actually, yeah, for every two. So I'm going to put uh, two, I'm gonna pump this twice. So uh, let's see, as an action, I manifest magical armor that injures foes around me. I gain plus one armor and enemies within near range of me take one damage per round. For every two sorcery I spent to increase the level of this ability, the armor damage and range of depletion increases by one. So I have increased it but to three damage per round and three armor. Why now this I... would be affected by the card from uh, Dark Noise, right? Oh yeah, I do need to start drawing Ooh. cards, guys. Uh, in fact, I should probably show you guys what this path looks like. Um, let me go ahead and just double check, make sure that everything looks normal. <laughs> uh, okay, because that could potentially change what I do if we're switching cards. Um, um, that's important to know. Okay, so yeah, but you are casting a spell. I will say that the spell will be is this the dark noise spell? Yeah. yeah. The turn, turn and that's just a mechanics question. Do the fortes trigger cards? Because I think I thought it was just spells. Uh, I will say it's, I think forte, no, flux and spells. So, okay. Yeah. So let me go ahead and uh, show so you. So this guys is from this dark looks. noise. All right. So you've got dark noise. Uh, let me go ahead. I just pulled a really interesting card. Oh, Let's no. see what that is. Um, so for dark noise, noise, you get fleeting moment. Uh, which it looks as though it's a candle that's been sliced at an angle, uh, floating in midair, being reflected in a very black pooled mirror. Uh, it strengthens indigo, it weakens gray magic. Uh, meanings, lost time, elusiveness, agility, reaction. Time moves inexorably forward. Sometimes it moves so quickly that we lose track of it. We try to watch, we try to pay attention, and yet it's gone. Mercurially, it slips through our fingers. Time can move so rapidly. In fact, that we can lose time. Look at the clock, it's 6.22. Look again, seemingly a moment later, and it's 8.05. They say that there was once an hour that came after midnight, but eventually it moved so quickly that it disappeared altogether. If that's true, perhaps the fate of all time and the midnight hour will flit away next. Time is elusive and impossible to hold. No matter how you try, it's a force even the gods fear. Quick and decisive reaction is the advice suggested by this card. The implication is that something is going to happen. It's going to happen soon, and it's going to happen fast. One must be ready. This could be a threat, or it could be a valuable opportunity. Either way, one has to react with agility. Physical, mental, or both of this elusive event will flitter away, leaving only its results behind to show that it ever happened. Something strange happens with time, or the perception of time. An NPC escapes from confinement. An elusive figure, perhaps a spirit or legendary beast, <laughs> makes a brief appearance. An NPC forms a feat of amazing agility. Okay, so what I'm going to say here, and this is very apropos, is as you impact uh, with the force, uh, the sheer force of your forte and your um, abilities hammer, what ends up happening is that is when you hear the sound of two more apertures opening on either side of the circle encompassing uh, this munition. Um, you can, you, it's not so much that you hear it so much as you feel it. You feel like now is a very important time. Time is fleeting, time is very quick. And as you see the sound bending things, as reality seems to warp, it warps with a great deal more um, pronounced nature in front of Kieran, who you can't see, so that doesn't apply anymore. Um, Glo glowing, uh, glowing goggles, so maybe. 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 Yeah, you see, I will say this, you see uh, a number, you see 
two point blue points of light um, somewhere nearby. You cannot ascertain what that means. Um, okay, so that's your turn, Everett. Uh, do I get to do the? But I, do I get to do my thing? You get to do your thing. Sorry, I just, yeah. Um, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm st- I'm gonna still do what I did then. So everything within that area takes three points of damage. Yeah. Um, so now everything in that area is gonna take seventeen points of damage per round. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, this thing, uh, you pa- you as you activate uh, the end is near. Um, you just watch as another one of these things tries to get close to you and then is repelled. Um, I just can't wait till one of them actually hits me. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah, so Everett, I believe you're up. Yeah, um, where am I in relation to like Allegra and Kieran? Can I see both of them? Am I just seeing Allegra? What's the next viable threat directly around me? Well, the Helminth still is uh, fragmented, but it is still alive. Mm, um, uh-huh. And uh, you do see Allegra. You do not see Kieran. Kieran is a has vanished. Okay. You do see and, the munition as well, very clearly. Right. And uh, Allegra, are you walking away from the spawn? Um, I was walking towards it, and then I basically got to long range and then cast it an offensive spell at it. Sweet. Um, I want to head over to the munition. Okay. <laughs> Um, what this is like? I need I need a refresher course on this bad boy. Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm going to go. I think for your benefit, I'm gonna say that uh, everybody in this magical simulacrum that is not your current PC, um, your normal PCs realize that this is a hate cyst. It is much larger and it is much fiercer than the one that you encountered in the opera house. It, the opera house one practically looks like a fledgling. Whoa. <laughs> oh boy, and I do not see Kieran, which means I'm probably gonna do something stupid like attack it. Okay, you may certainly do that. What would you like to do? Um, so my my sorcery is now depleted. <laughs> Just kidding, because I have two actions. Nope, it's back. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so I use one action to. I just most of my notes. I think everyone needs to know it. Just went from sorcery depleted, sorcery full, sorcery depleted. What is going on? Because nobody knows anymore. <laughs> um, I'm uh, I'm gonna come down on it with. I might hit it with another stunning strike. Okay. Rather than actually use one of my spells on it. Um, yeah, stunning strike, here it comes. Okay, uh, go ahead and hit it. Uh, you are going to need to hit a 10 twice. But am I though? <laughs> <laughs> but are you though? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, does your chal- does your adventure beat the challenge already? Uh, well, it gets reduced by three and two. Yeah. And uh, is that is that it? I think that might be it this time. Okay. Yeah, it's it's just two from Crescendo. Just remember, next round we start taking damage. That's right. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's reduced by five. So I have to hit a five now. Yeah. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Five twice. That'll be an eight. Okay. Oop. Oh no, a three. Okay. Uh, I will call this a mixed success. So I will say, um, you will do. I think I'm going to let you, you're not going to stun it, but you can do half of your damage. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's do math, everybody, again. Um, so is it not going to take the stunning effect? No, I'm afraid not. Okay, so half damage, no stun. So five. Mm-hmm. And two again. And... Okay, so the full damage is 12, so it takes six points of damage. Excellent. Okay. Um, So it takes six points of damage. It begins once again flailing. And um, I will say that um, as you strike it, um, you weaken a portion of one of its tendrils, one of the larger ones that sweeps to try and strike you. Um, Awesome. I'm going to try to fly up again because my... uh, Has it been an hour? Because that's when I check for the depletion of the the ring. Yeah, you guys, I think, have been moving fairly quickly. This is an uh, in action mode, so it's been moving in seconds. You okay, so no no need time. to check for depletion yet. Yeah. All right. right. Cool. Um, uh, that's my turn. Excellent. Okay. 
Uh, Kieran, you are right up in this thing. You have activated your uh, goggles as well. Uh, what are you looking for? What are you trying to do? Did any any like bits and pieces of this thing fly off when my yeah. punched it? Oh yeah, one of the tendrils, one of the larger pieces, has been severely weakened from the strike. So, um, and it is a larger piece. Um, this thing is massive. It's basically, I'd say, the diameter of this tendril is about two feet. Um, mm. So what uh, that that said, you can you felt like the crunch. Uh, you could hear the crunch of uh, some sort of internal tubule structure break. Uh, what do you do? Hmm. Um. I think Kieran's gonna try and rip this thing off. Okay. And take a little sample. Uh. So that would be a accuracy. Okay. Uh, you, I'm a asking. Uh. That will definitely be accuracy. Um, remember to add the level of your weapon um, to your attack, and then on top of that, or what? I don't think I have a weapon. I think it's my hand. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and I'll do a sortilege as well. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, what am I looking for? Okay, so I will say that because this is severely weakened, um, and it's not the core of the cyst or, or the uh, the munition itself. Um, so you're only going to need one success, but you're going to need to hit an eight. <sighs> that is a zero on the roll and a three on the magic die. Oof. All right. Tough does one. does Allegra see you do this, or are you trying to be stealthy? I mean, as, as stealthy as someone with bright, glowing blue goggles okay. can be. Yeah, I think that cool. this is the the first time you like lost track of Kieran, and now you see him. Um, okay. You see those blue pinpoints of light. So I think, yeah, I think he like kind of reaches with one, and can't quite get on it, and reaches with two, and it's still struggling with this thing. And I think that's everything Kieran can do. Okay, so in that case, Allegra, it is your turn. Cool. Um, Allegra is going to go to where Kieran is, um, and then while so doing, she will refresh her intellect pool as her action. Okay. Um, as uh, I will say this, okay, you're gonna intellect. Uh, you're gonna refresh your intellect pool. You are where Kieran is. Um, Okay, if that's all the action that you're going to take, um, we're going to go ahead and resolve the enemy's actions. The apertures on either side of Okris, uh, on either kind of side of the circle of this munition, um, open. And once again, you see two more squads and they will bear down very quickly on your current location. Um, the other thing you notice, um, I will say, Kieran, is inside of the cyst, there seems to be a form that is moving. Um, whatever, um, Mott was able to do with their strike, uh, with his strike has seemingly kind of interrupted it, but it seems like, uh, things are moving within this growth. Uh, finally, uh, those, as those, um, apertures open, you begin hearing more of the chittering noise. Oh, Chris, what's your turn? Uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to be muted. Um, it is turn round six. That means I take a wound mm -hmm. as the speed, um, as the music of crescendo, which is really just, which is interestingly enough, um, is uh, basically three slightly different heartbeats mm -hmm. moving at uh, erratic erratically at this point. Um, so it's just like a, like a, just a really rapid percussive beat. Um, so I'm going to take a wound. Uh, I cannot negate that, is that correct? Or uh, I do not think so. That puts you at two wounds, remember. I'm about to fix that. Um, so I, I'm first I'm gonna roll for, um, I'm gonna roll start rolling some depletion here. So this is gonna be um, one for, oh yeah, that's good. Uh, so uh, dark noise is still up with a five, though it depletes on a zero through four. And then um, let me actually double check whether I roll one or two dice on. Um, uh, on my friendly neighborhood uh, 
the uh, armor of my armor of conviction from the end it being nigh. Uh, it is just on a zero. Good, that's a three. All right. Um, everything is still up. That means everything is going to take 14 points of damage. That's near me. Excellent. Um, yeah. As uh, you, I think the noise just immediately obliterates the one that was going to reach out and try to I touch you. I thought it was you. 17. Is it, it is 17? 17. Yeah. Oh, it's 17 because the yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gross. And uh, you can see, uh, I think, make me a perception roll. I'll put a Bene into that. I didn't, shouldn't have done that, but that's, so that's a 10 instead of a nine. Okay. So uh, with that perception roll, very well done. Uh, you can start, you start seeing that there are the squads um, on the either side of the apertures uh, are, were moving forward and then they kind of perceived what was going on. Um, and, you know, basically this oppositional force, you hear quiet chittering and then you see more of those uh, kind of marksmen that you encountered uh, in the tower um, beginning to mount weaponry on their shoulders or rather just kind of sticking out these large appendages and you realize they are going to commence firing on you. That's... All right. Um, question. Mm -hmm. So are those weapons part of them or are they technically objects? Part of them. Not oh, rude. Unfortunate. However... Are these things technically alive? They're very much alive. Damn. Um, all right, I <laughs> guess. Um, so I am, uh, is there any left alive from the original squad I was dealing with? No, the, uh, I will say the crescendo and uh, the dark noise obliterates uh, the opposition that's immediately around you. Here's a question for you, because there's not rules written for it. It keeps going. Can I move my dark noise? Um, or do I have to recast it? I think you would have to recast it. I'm going to be a All stickler. Right. When you're dealing 17 points, I'm like, yeah, Around. maybe recast um, that for me. All right. Uh, so I am going to. Uh, all right. So then in that situation, then I'm going to. Uh, uh, I'll let that end if there's nothing in the area to kill. Mm -hmm. um, and I will run to uh, towards. These are two separate groups. Is that correct? The uh, No, I will say you guys are fairly clustered at this point. Um, I will say that Great. Kieran is separate. Um, All right. Yeah. Love that. Mm -hmm. oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It's it, uh, I'm the groups of enemies. Oh, yeah. They are two separate. Um, there's one aperture opening and then there's another aperture opening. OK, uh, well, I'll deal with one of these at a time then. Um, so I am going to first. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Okay, first I'm gonna cast, uh, I'm gonna use uh, Forte ability. Uh, so I think as as Ocarus strides forward, which seems unnaturally fast, uh, I will use Leech Reality and I'm going to pump that um, number of, I have, two in, I have two injuries, is that correct? Uh, two wounds. Two wounds, okay, so how many injuries do I need? I need three injuries to heal a wound? Uh, yes, you need three injuries to heal a wound. Um, so I'm going to pump, uh, cause I have a, uh, I'm going to pump, uh, Leech Reality, which is a forte ability of, uh, Herald's Endings. I'm going to pump that for a total of, uh, uh, three. Um, so, and I am actually just targeting, um, I can do it on an entity. So I'm going to target one of these entities. Okay. Um, that's nearby. All right. Um, so go ahead. That one, a single entity from the squad is only going to be a six. I'll do it for four. Um, and uh, question, what's being buffed right now in terms of sun? Uh, in terms of sun, I believe that that, oh, I probably need to actually return a card now that you've said it. Um, I haven't cast a spell, so. Oh, that's true. Uh, I think if it's still fleeting moment, it's plus indigo minus gray. Exactly. Okay, okay doesn't matter then. All right, um, I'm gonna put four into this for, uh, uh, so, well, actually, sorry, first, I'm going to refresh my fucking sorcery pool. Um, and then I'm going to put four into uh, Leech Reality, targeting um, one of the people, one of the groups to my left. Are you taking two actions or three? Because that sounds... Two. Okay. All right. That's one. Mm -hmm. um, one to do this. And then I'm going to move and um, I'm going to uh, refreshing my pool and moving. Okay, cool. Um, all right. So uh, go ahead and give me that roll. You need to hit a six once. Uh, okay. to kill one of these things. So that's three plus one dice, um, and I get plus two to the venture from Crescendo. Uh, and 
Oh, yeah. I think you just automate. Well, yeah, no. You just need to hit two or one. Okay. Uh, that's a five and a six on the dice. Okay. So you uh, leech the reality of this thing. Uh, it begins to desiccate and fall down dead. And you uh, take those four points. How would you like to go ahead and apportion those? Uh, let's see. I inflict equal. I inflict damage equal to the target equal to the level of this ability, and immediately heal a number of injuries or gain physicality bene equal to the result of this ability divided however I choose. I'm gonna heal six injuries for two wounds and get a physicality bene. Excellent. Okay. So. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna move into range of the other crew, which means that they can go ahead and fuck off and take three points of damage each. Okay. I will say you already did three points this round. Uh, so we'll do oh, to, the... to nobody around me. Fair, yeah, fair, exactly. fair. Um, well, completely decimated that. Uh, Everett, you're up. All right. I'm seeing like these apertures just keep reappearing. And at this point, I'm just kind of like, take the fucking sample and let's get out of here. Um, but I don't I don't know where Kieran is, so I can't really uh, I think <laughs> yell at anyone. Kieran anyway. is pretty visible at this point. Oh, you are now. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Struggling with a tentacle. Yeah, yeah, literally the one that you just struck. I think uh, Mott uh, flies down into this mess and is just, you need a hand there, mate. If you wouldn't mind. Yeah, hold on. Because um, <laughs> I'm still flying, I'm just going to like kind of uh, like fit my arms like underneath like yours and just try to like pull backwards as you're still holding on to this thing to give you <laughs> give you an extra bit of uh, torque. <laughs> yeah, I will. I will give you two on your next venture. Uh, well, actually, you need to still hit that target for me. So uh, 10, twice. Oh, well, you know what? I still have, I, mm, no, I only have the plus two to my action now because I'm not making the attack roll. Okay. Uh, so seven is now the venture. Yeah, seven is now the venture. Seven, no, you said oh, wait, 10, eight, eight is the venture. Yeah, so actually you only need to hit it once because it's just the tentacle, it's not the growth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine on the dice. Nine on the dice. Okay, uh, Kieran, you get two more to your next venture. Also, uh, I believe you still have a second action from uh, Crescendo. Yeah, and I, I take a wound. So I'm gonna say how that looks like is the, there's like a very thin crack that's starting to appear in, in the mask. Um, nothing too worrying, but there's a fissure that's forming. Okay. Um, excellent. So, uh, you have successfully set up Kieran for your next action. Uh, yeah. Um, so did you already do your second action as well? Oh, that's right, I have second action. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> Crescendo is broken. <laughs> it is so broken. Look, oh, don't yell at me. I didn't write it. That's a core rule. That's okay. a core rule book spell. <laughs> I know, I'm messing. Go ahead. Um, Wait until you see decrescendo. Does there happen to be, and this is just for flavor now, I guess, just oof, I can just do a little spice on this. Um, are there any more of the enemy near me at all that I can see that are within sight? Um, I think nothing close enough, but you are hearing them very okay, easily. That's not going to work. Is there any way to just sort of like either hold my action until I see, hold this bonus action until I see another one or just let it go? Because right now I think I want to just be pulling most of my... Uh, efforts into getting the sample because I'm starting to get the feeling we're about to get overwhelmed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I will say you can hold your action very easily. Okay, perfect. Um, Kieran, you're up. Uh, fucking doing physical stuff that I'm not good at. I'm going to continue to pull. I got you. <laughs> uh, you're flying a little bit. You flying a little bit. I'm rolling at a plus two. Uh, plus four because plus uh, that four. that. Tentacle is still weakened and uh, Everett is also holding it. All right, and the so uh, I'm adding nothing. So plus four gives me, what's my target? Uh, plus four, uh, you're adding nothing. So plus four gives you a five as your uh, target, I believe. Oh my God, that's another zero. Oh no. Oh, funny. Uh, what was that? <laughs> um, I will tell you this. Um, yeah, I think whatever it is, you're just trying so hard. Um, but this thing, it's beginning to like move and metastasize and uh, it is beginning to, it, it is, I don't think it's a matter of skill. I think it's a matter of just, this thing is trying to make sure you cannot hit it, um, which is more than you would have expected. Um, so that leads us to Allegra, what do you do? 
Allegra is also right there watching this uh, and with a kind of smug look on her face, like a smile quirking up at like watching this effort happen. She just goes, allow me. And she's going to use her level five forte ability, form meets function, level five. I transmute an abstract concept into the form of a proprietary object in my possession. I must give this object a name and state its purpose. It, I add plus two to any venture as long as I wield the object for the original stated purpose. Um, weapons I create in this way also do plus two damage compared to their non-magical counterparts. If I use the object for anything other than its intended purpose, it disappears. Okay. So, what object are you creating? I am going to create a dagger called Intrepid Curiosity. Okay. And I'm going to use it to cut off a piece of this thing. Excellent. Um, so, awful. Yeah. Awful. <laughs> For everybody, everybody here and everybody in chat, that's awful. Never stop. And we created it together. Um, There's Yakety Sax playing while like Mott's trying to help Kieran like pull this thing off with like brute strength, and you just walk on over, just like. Um, I'm gonna use my intrepid curiosity. Why not? Um, so uh, remind me, what is the level of uh, the spell? Uh, the level of the spell is five. Okay. Uh, which, if you, which uh, I believe, if memory serves, as long as you are using it to take this sample uh, it alone, is seven. Um, so, which means that um, with Mott's help, you easily beat the challenge. Um, so you're going to go ahead and you can sever this tentacle. It's very large. Um, it is going to be hard to move. Um, so, um, that how, being thi how thick did you say? Is about two feet thick. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, okay. So at this point, would you like to take any movement now that you have, uh, you guys have got this thing in your grip? Um, I mean, I think Allegra will just look at the other two near to her and go, shall we get out of here then? My bag, if you please. <laughs> and there is uh, a kind of large, the, the briefcase kind of doctor's bag that Kieran was carrying sitting on the ground or, uh, next to him. And then, yeah, Allegra will like shimmy the, the tentacle into the bag. <laughs> uh Gross. Absolutely. Very gross. Um, mm -hmm. As this happens, uh, the enemies now take a turn. Um, roll me depletion on your uh, spell against the helmets. And also, oh, yeah. yeah. And then um, something else will transpire. Uh, that depletes. Okay. The helminth, uh finally um, uh, realizing, uh, still mute, that it can now take action against you. It begins to move forward and it begins to uh, try to slice down uh, with its uh, uh, slicing tentacle. Um, the other, or slicing uh, strike. The other thing that happens is you begin hearing all of you the um, sound of the artillery being carried by these uh, enemy uh, forces uh, beginning to sound off and report near your position. Uh, and that is when, as the strike begins to make purchase um, against you, um, that is when I am going to GM shift as um, you feel a spell take effect. Specifically a spell that you have never seen but only heard of on the front lines. One called Zaleska's Obstructing Overwatch as the effect that this attack that would have happened is negated by a sudden shield of glass of uh, splintering and forming around you. The windows of the tower, the porticos uh, of the doors all shatter and the glass falls to the earth. And from the glass that shards that meet the ground, a form coalesces. Uh, a form that takes the uh, shimmering blue countenance of Zaleska on. Zaleska, general of the Vance, has entered the fray. Um, and as her form coalesces, you see another rise behind it, and another, as you realize several splintered doppelgangers of her form, uh, and each of them begin independently casting a spell. She is buying you time. What do you do? I, I will say for this, we're going to go 
one last round. Uh, everybody make your choices very quickly. If you have two actions, go ahead and do, take them now. What do you do? Uh, can I see this first and foremost? It is hard to miss. All right. So um, I guess initially, I'm, uh, I, do I need to check for depletion or no? Uh, I, only if you want to keep the spells going. I want to keep my fucking armor going. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, we're good. Okay. Um, I would like to use my uh, forte ability. Uh, if if this is all, <laughs> is is there a sense that we are about to get the fuck out of here? Uh, that it, uh, well, you've heard Mott say something to that effect. <laughs> all right. Um, I think you watch. Uh, you watch. Uh, Okris stride over past all of you. Um, hammer in one hand, uh, just calmly walking away. At this point, the armor that was visible underneath their jacket has now expanded, and this pure inky blackness is um, now forming. Like almost, um, if if you've ever seen Mass, if you've ever played Mass Effect, think uh, think the Sentinel armor, except it is pure void black and um, kind of almost looks liquidy. Uh, they are going to walk past you and use um, the rest of their, uh, or well, all but one of their uh, sorcery points to cast, uh, to use their uh, forte ability impermeance of objects, um, specifically targeting every single corpse within range. Ooh, okay. Um, so yeah, I think that basically with impermanence of objects, go ahead and read that for me very quickly. All right. The works of neither gods nor Vizlay can withstand the, withstand the strength of my conviction. I may choose one of the following. All objects within a short distance of me that are not being worn or held shatter, break, or crumble to dust. A random ephemera item GM's choice appears on my person of a level no greater than the level of this ability halved. Uh, I am tar that uh, there's two options. I am choosing that one for the sake of time. I, I won't read the other half. Okay. Uh, so let me go ahead. I am, while that is happening, I am going to figure out what ephemera item you pick. Um, go ahead, uh, Mott, you're up. What do you do? Yeah, most of my stuff relies on, on a close combat individual fight. So is there a way to sacrifice the two actions that I would take to try to gain some movement? Absolutely. You may basically, I will say that you may use all of it to get a okay, very far distance terrific. away. Okay, terrific. Like, uh, does anyone want to ride? Uh, first off, I mean, I know I'm still holding like Kieran. Mm -hmm. You need one? Oh, um, can I you can... flag me down? <laughs> I, I get just flags like attack, like a snacksy. Yeah. Um, uh, actually, I think o I, Okris would not. Um, also, I have a whole second action um, to use, so I can use that for movement. Okay. I think like this, that's that forte ability goes off, and then you just see Okris start running again to the beat of. Um, and I would like to actually, uh, do we want to end crescendo or no? I think I don't. That's um, that's up to you. I would not like to end crescendo, so. Um, uh, yeah, I will take a wound, um, Zach, by the way. So I'm back at one wound and, uh, okay. but I still have action and movement to fucking book it. Okay, cool. Um, so count that wound. You also get Charlotte seeds. You plant this handful of seeds and whisper up to 25 words to them as you do. At the next sunrise, the seeds grow into a large flowering plant that whispers your words over and over. Color green, uh, level three. Uh, figured I'd have to give you something weird. Um, may not necessarily be useful, but it is at random. Love it. Okay. Uh, uh, and then in that case, I think like Mott might, because uh, he's still holding Kieran's like, shall we get out of here? By way of the apertures, if we could. The, their yeah, are, apertures. Are, are, yeah, yeah, are there any apertures open still? There are, I will tell you this, as you look and survey them, the landscape that you see through the aperture is starkly different from that of yours. Uh, Kieran says, I just need to get close. Close, I can get you, but I ain't going through there. Um, and said thusly, I think with the with the two actions now being used to boost movement, it's the work of a second to blast you over there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, at which point, Kieran, you may make me a perception roll and you may then make your action. Sure. Um, so, Kieran is holding on to his bag, which this uh, large tentacle has disappeared into because the space is larger on the inside than it is on the outside. This is a nine perception uh, on the die. Um, okay, so I will tell you this. Um, with a nine, you realize very quickly what this is. 
Um, this landscape is starkly different, but you've been all throughout the actuality. You've been throughout all of Indigo. It And it reminds you of something. And then it very much akin to um, a sudden eureka moment, you realize what it is. Whatever this place is, it's a half world. Sick. Uh, Kieran reaches into a pocket and puts his gloved hand around something kind of soft and fleshy uh, and chucks what looks to be to any observant nothing into this aperture. And he has sent his third eye into this aperture. Okay. Oh, <laughs> what an invisible sun sound. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Literal you, third eye. <laughs> yeah, you, you have thrown your third eye into the aperture, um, at which point uh, now... Uh, is Allegra, that a third eye in your pocket or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> oh, it is. Alleg <laughs> Allegra, it is your turn. Right. Um, so remembering another one of our objectives, um, Allegra is going to recast Ventonda on the Helmuth creature um, to, well, with kind of a nod at, at Zaleska's giant shattering form um, in, of thanks. She's going to try to kind of subdue the, the Helmuth creature so that Zaleska has an easier time of it. Um, so I will do that. Um, obviously when I get far away enough, I imagine the spell will deplete anyway, but what have you. Um, and then once the creature is no longer able to make melee attacks again, uh, she will try to grab the name badge on its uniform. Okay. Um, go ahead and, uh, give me, so remind me, I believe, uh, um, I believe your spell actually succeeded, um, yes. before without a uh, challenge roll. Um, right. okay. Uh, so you cast that, um, you, uh, I give it, uh, the same command, melee attacks. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Uh, I would like you to go ahead and make a, uh, level seven challenge roll to see if you can just pull this. This is physicality or accuracy. Accuracy is more what we're looking for. Perfect. So I will pump a Bene into that. And that is a seven on the dice. So awesome. Eight. eight. Okay. You grab uh, this uh, name tag, Lestrange, uh, oh, off of the uh, uh, off of the um, uniform that has. Oh, actually, no. I'm sorry, you don't. Um, basically, uh, because Okris obliterated, or not Okris, uh, Mott obliterated the top half of this thing. <laughs> oh, it was on the. Yeah, it was on the the, the lapels. Um, Wait, but. A question is: it, Did it just it just completely disappeared? It wasn't. It's not. Did like I disintegrate with a punch? Um, well, I mean, I will tell you this. Um, I'm gonna. Oh, I will turn a card, and we'll see if you get it or not. Uh, okay. This one is Savage Sword. Uh, war, savagery, strength, violence, brute force. Um, PC has some advantage. A battle occurs. Someone is murdered. Something is destroyed. Someone's murdered. Uh, yeah, something is destroyed. I I'm, did a murder. Yeah, you did a murder. I destroyed everything. <laughs> um, the color is red, so I think that with the sheer force, um, whatever, I think that... Oh, if, yeah, and, and the stunning strike is red. Yeah, mm. uh, exactly. So I think what ends up happening then is um, you probably see some remains of the uniform, but it's covered too much in too much of that inky black nightmare substance for you to make out a name tag. Okay. Um, so yeah. Also, statistics, if it was a corpse, I'd destroy yeah. it. Oh yeah. Well, that's a good question. I mean, the thing is not dead, technically, but the, the piece of whatever it was is removed from its <laughs> living. Look, look, I can give you an identifying tattoo on a leg, but you know, I think at some point you just have to accept that this guy's going to be cannon fodder. I beat it to death. <laughs> <laughs> um... So, okay, I think what ends up happening is, um, yeah, I think that you just understanding that that is the case, you have uh, cast your spell on the helminth, uh, whatever it remains, uh, at which point um, the enemy turn rolls around. They're all focusing on uh, Zaleska now. One Zaleska is uh, attacking the um, squads moving through the apertures. Uh, one Zaleska is focusing fire on the helminth. Uh, the final one is uh, beginning to uh, cast 
uh, eradicatory spells on the growth, the munition. Um, so at this point, what I'm going to say is, what is everybody's intention? Uh, I know, Kieran, you do want to... You've already kind of surveyed all of this. Um, what is everybody's intention now? I'm, get, I'm getting out. Hey, hang, hang there. Okay. Zoom. Okay, so I will tell you this. Um, why don't all of you make me a single movement roll? Okay. And just tell me how all of you do, and we'll see what the opposition looks like. Ooh, I have an enhancement to that. Excellent. Thanks for the despair, Okra. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, this was what was the roll? Um, so? just uh, just tell me what you get. That was uh, great because like, one of those. I need to zero. know what it, what I'm rolling. It's though. movement. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, eight for Kieran. Eight okay. five. Allegra also. Okay. Eight five for Okris. Okay. I will say this: you guys do not manage to um, encounter any obstacles, as basically Zaleska has opened the way for you, and with the gift of flight that Everett is uh, using, um, you are move very quickly out of range. Probably, um, I think that leaving the enemy basically tied up with um, your mentor. Um, so, uh, as you guys are making your way back, um, I take it, is anybody, yeah, Hopper. I, uh, Crescendo ends because I'd like to not die. Excellent, good, good choice, good choice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, Blood is I pouring down. Did I sustain a second wound in that? Um, I think, uh, I will say for the case of this, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that you would have made a defensive, uh, choice there. Um, okay. So, uh, you guys managed to exit the, uh, alpha target zone. Um, what, uh, so you have been given a rendezvous point that is not very far from the church of the, uh, unknowable angel, uh, where you, uh, first went into the trenches and encountered Sergeant Jaren. Uh, is everybody moving in that fashion? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I would like, uh, as you guys are making uh, your way down, I would like everybody to make a perception roll. Seven. Okay. Six. Okay. Four. And Kieran. Ten. Excellent. Okay. Um, Kieran, as you are running ahead of the pack, um, I well, think, well, not ahead, sorry. <laughs> I think, I think that, Mott, you are moving so quickly um, that you see uh, one thing, uh, which is that you see a, a single member of the enemy, um, and you you very clearly just see what it is, this creature, uh, and you see it turn a corner as you are zooming down. Um, it, however, when you next pass it, um, the kind of the corner and look to one side it is no longer there what you pick up Kieran, as you are moving um past that same corner all of you are booking it as quickly as possible uh Kieran, you notice that uh there is a brick wall you also saw the same um creature um however as you are moving mod is moving too quickly for uh for him to see uh what is on the brick wall in the abandoned alley which appears to be a large chalk drawn rectangle with a circle on one side. Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think Kieran says anything, but no notice. So this is like off, off to the side, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's down a alleyway. I will also say one thing that you do notice about the um, creature. Hmm. It does not have a helm. Hmm. And and are basically are we following the creature or we're heading in a direction we saw a creature run somewhere else? Exactly the second one. Ooh. Um. Um. Uh, I think what Kieran says is uh you know points points his free arm and says there's a target. So it just the one didn't have a helmet. It's gone now, though, right? It, it is completely gone. That's interesting. Could I, could I roll a magical lore to see what I know about chalk drawings on brick walls? Absolutely. Ooh, that's a three. 
You've, you feel like you've seen this before. You feel like you've seen it very recently, but the thing is that you're just moving too quickly. Mm -hmm. The objective is right in front of you. Um, you just need to exit and get to yep. the rendezvous point. That's, yeah, Kieran can't spend more time thinking about it. Yeah, excellent. Okay, so uh, you guys managed to, I will say this, give me one more round of movement rolls. That sucked. I guess I'm getting tired. That was a zero. Okay. I also got a zero. One. <laughs> eight. Okay. Um, oh, all this devastation. Oh, yeah, is... <laughs> yeah. This is, this, is just, this is good stuff, man. This is this is, this is a life. I, I was going to say, Okris is invigorated. And uh, I think at this point, um, all of you are beginning to lose um, your uh, uh, kind of endurance, kind of trying to book it out. Um, I will say... We are moving out of uh, action mode, and we are moving into, um, I'd say, narrative. Um, not narrative. Not, yeah, narrative. As I think that you guys have managed to get past the overall danger. Um, I will say, however, um, that you are some distance away from uh, the rendezvous point. You're still behind enemy lines. Um, let me see. Yeah, I was, yeah, go ahead. Um, can, uh, can I, I'd like to tear a strip, uh, tear a chunk off my field jacket. Um, I think, uh, uh, qu question about narrative mode and keeping my forte ability up, um, mm -hmm. as well. Can I just do that? I, it is, I just checked to make sure that through our action sequence, it stayed up. Yeah. Um, oh, you it mean doesn't the, affect allies. So the end is near. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think, yeah, absolutely. You may do that. I will say that. I would like to uh, tear a strip off my coat and cover my face. Okay, you do that. Um, and I am going to turn one card. <laughs> okay, so I'm glad that this happened. Because I just turned the revolutionary. Uh, meanings, lust, sexuality, change, and destruction. Sovereign of the Family of Secrets, the Revolutionary is a force for change, quite possibly the least secret of the family. The Revolutionary is brazen and bold, changing what needs changing, even if through destruction or violence. The strong sexuality of the uh, Revolutionary is obvious, but this aspect is quite separate from the other. There is no suggestion of sexual violence here, but instead sincere passion, mutual attraction, generally considered a positive card. Um, alternatively, change for the better. Okay. All right, I think I know what happened. Conditions change in the favor of the PC. Uh, whose sovereign is Secrets, Ravens, Books, and Flame? Not me this time. Is it no one? No one. Okay. Twigs. <laughs> it's Twigs. Okay. Fuck. I, I will tell you this. Um, you see a doorway begin appearing uh, down as you guys have traversed all this way you see another door. Um, thick behind enemy lines, you feel a neon light shimmering on your face. As a neon light sign appears over a single solitary wall, says zeros. And that is, uh, I think, where we're going to stop in the animus. However, I feel like we've You've successfully completed the operation, um, at which point I think um, I'm going to give you guys five minutes to discuss what is going on in the minds of everybody else as you feel your forms shimmer. And Gabrielle, Kiri, Maurice, and Twig can all kind of discuss what they've seen thus far. Are we aware of each other's presence? I think, well, that's the question. We've already kind of determined that you guys are experiencing the emotions. I think that in this moment, this kind of intermediary point where it's probably the middle of the description and the summary of the mission, uh, basically transitions into the um, debrief and the summary of the, of the final end result, you have a few fleeting moments, maybe minutes or more, to discuss what is transpiring. That's what we're gonna call it. 
Yeah, and I think since in the first episode, like we looked around and all saw each other, like within these new forms, it would make sense that like we know each other is there. Yeah, absolutely. Freeze frame astral forms step out. <laughs> yeah, Maurice says, uh, didn't expect to see any familiar faces and kind of indicates towards Twig and Kiri. Says, <laughs> that's your sister. And that's, well, you. Twig just kind of raises one hand, which notably is has a green thumb on it. And just, um, is it possible to throw up in the, uh, in the, <laughs> in the war report? I, you know can what? astral can astral projections just barf their guts out? Yeah. If you're going to vomit, please don't do so on the text. <laughs> uh, so guess what I vomit? Oh, what do you vomit? Ink. Oh God, that's right. Logovores, man. Um, <laughs> yeah, you. So you, you just see Twig just go <laughs> and just like kind of splatters ink on the ground. What does what does Gabrielle make of all this? Man, her brain is like going a mile a second here. Uh, like she's trying to piece together all of the stuff that's happening like within the war. Um, but I think the one thing that's sticking out is the image of the woman that has her eyes. Like that's that's haunting her right now. Excellent. And Kiri, what about you? Yeah, I think Kiri just like sort of looks at Maurice and and you know wide eyed goes. I didn't know. I don't know what she's doing here. She's never spoken of any of this. Why would she? She wouldn't remember. Exactly. Yes, I suppose you're right. We're not trapped here, are we? This I don't think so. This will end. When the book of ends. Of course. How long's the fucking book? don't think uh, we're going to be able to get out until we see the entire story. That generally is how digesting a text works. No, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's over fast and it doesn't take forever and it doesn't make you seasick. I meant you metaphorically. You're a special case. But you two, I can understand why you are inhabiting the people that you are, but M Maurice and I, what? I have Do you no know this person? Who Kieran is? I've never seen him before. I, I've never heard of him. I I don't think I know any makers. Not well. I don't know this not either. Yeah, well, yeah, that's all good and well, but the fuck is that? Could uh, it be you? Pointing at Ogress. No. Why couldn't it be you? This place has done stranger things. For one it... thing, Twig gestures at their face. Um, we are living in probably one of the weirdest magical places that I could ever have possibly conceived when I lived someplace else. You don't think that it was some sort of, how do we even know, like, proverbially, like she's like poking at your face, like how do we even know like that's, which face is real? Maurice um, put, puts an astral hand on your shoulder and says, I'm <laughs> sure it's just someone that looks sort of like you and is named Okris. I hate all of this. I will uh, say that I think the animus setting is like the emotional content of like what Gav is able to feel towards everyone else is tampered down. Otherwise, she'd be killing you right now. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah, I think I, as you guys are moving again, again, your forms begin to shimmer and your every movement seems to leave a trail of neon light behind you as you once again see these separate forms kind of looking um, you know, over their shoulders at them, and then suddenly finding yourself, your perspective change from third person to first. And at which point you see uh, Roz, the bartender uh, of uh, Zeros, uh, looking at all of you and saying, so, what'll it be? And that is where we're going to end uh, tonight's episode. Uh, guys, thanks so much. This has been really great. Um, let's do some quick character recaps because we got three yes. minutes. Um, mm -hmm. 
starting with Marcy, uh, or rather, uh, Gabrielle, actually. Yeah, we're doing it, uh, your PCs, so. Ooh, who, so that's who's getting the joy and the despair? Yeah, exactly. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, uh, that's a, this is like the first one that's really stumping me, I think. Like, there is a certain joy, and especially with my character's arc, mm -hmm. um, I am finally seeing some aspect of the truth I am trying to uncover, and I think that Gab's lived through one of the most devastating wars on our reality. I don't think it phases her that much to see warfare. Um, it's hard to say warfare would be described as joy, but oh my god, is this something that she's familiar with? Like, the the everything to like the trenches to uh, how everything is like having a, a clear cut mission. There are enemy lines like oh, it is refreshing to come back to something that makes sense, even though the enemy they're fighting is beyond her comprehension. Uh, I'm going to have to go with Joy. Excellent. Take one, Joy. And uh, keep in mind, if you guys also had a GM shift happen over the course of the previous two episodes, um, you can either take it as uh, uh, I get I doled it out, or you can also have a separate reaction. So there's two GM shifts, right? Yeah. For one for, I believe, uh, the hammer. And did I give one to Mott? I think it was Despair, wasn't There's it? There's one at the group as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. Uh, well, in that case, yeah, you guys as a whole take the one that I gave. Um, okay. Would yeah. that be Joy or Despair? You didn't specify. Uh, I mean, that's... Zaleska's showing up and rescuing us all. That's joy. a Joy. That's yeah. a Joy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Bill uh, slash Maurice. <laughs> Uh, full full despair. What is this horror? Um, seeing your hate cis and cis spawn. I think he's you know thinking about his own recent encounter, his own you know recent permanent mutation. Um, and yeah, other than that, just the utter confusion at his possible connection to to Kieran and the familiar faces, Jaren, and everything else despair absolutely all right so take one point of despair um twig slash hopper how'd you the fucking worst <laughs> i mean i am but also this is awful um twig is fucking ghost riding something that looks like them but is not and that I think like Twig is so distressed at looking at this face that objectively should like that look like them, but in, is not them. That is that is not them. That is an alien entity that does not belong. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, take that despair. Um, finally, Allegra, or pardon me, Kiri, uh, Kiri slash Marissa. Yeah, um, so I feel like similarly uh, to Gav here, Kiri is going to take a joy, but a kind of like reluctant or mixed feelings sort of joy, because she's seen Zaleska, whose grimoire she's carrying and has some like an inti intimate guardianship with. Um, and she's seen Zaleska like doing some freaking amazing magic. Um, and she also saw her sister in a very different context than she's ever seen her sister before. Her sister has always been this very imposing figure, you know, who kind of flits in and out of her life. And now she's seeing her sister like doing something and, you know, using knowledge as power, as it were. Um, and I think that's ter at once terrifying, but also like very compelling to Kiri in a way that like, she hasn't necessarily seen this side of Allegra before. And so she's starting to realize there's a lot more to her sister than like she ever knew, or really that her sister might even ever know about herself. Um, and so uh, keeping with it, the theme of the knife that Allegra created, I think the curiosity is what's driving the joy, the kind of search for more, the fact that answers are coming and that quest for knowledge that is such a Part, a core part of Kiri that it always just gives her joy to go on that journey. Excellent. Um, so all of you guys um, go ahead and take all of that, um, you know, those points, uh, put them towards your crux totals. I will also say, um, because we did two sessions and you guys accomplished uh, all of your objectives, uh, take four acumen total. 
Um, so, uh, guys, well done. Uh, we are now, uh, because we're uh, running a little bit late, uh, I would like everybody to go ahead and do your shout outs and plugs for this week. So, uh, once again, starting in our normal order, uh, Marcy, who do you want to plug? Oh boy. Um, no, like no major plugs, but just for the channel, um, next weekend, uh, on Saturday at 3 PM, which is sort of our new time for flights of fandom for the next few months. Uh, we are going to be starting a season two of our star Wars flight long shot. Uh, Hopper and I are both in that. We are playing a couple of really rowdy bounty hunters. Uh, it's a good time. Uh, we're hoping that season one will be on YouTube soon for everyone to kind of catch up on. Uh, it's a lot, a lot of fun. I'm very excited to see what happens with these characters in our, our season two. It's a, a four-parter um, throughout the month of February. So we hope to see you there. Excellent. Uh, Bill, any shout outs or plug this week? Sure. I am sure this will be echoed by other people. I always got to plug in Counterparty, friend of the show, uh, actual play 5e Magic of the Gathering Ravnica uh, podcast, expertly edited. Check it out. Also, need to plug uh, Party of One, uh, an excellent podcast by Jeff Stormer, also friend of the show. Uh, actual play RPG, different g uh, game system every week, one on one. Definitely check it out. Uh, I was recently a guest on the Framework podcast. I got to talk about uh, how much I like Alien 3. Uh, if you like movies at all, check it out. The two regular hosts are uh, incredible. And also, if you're not watching The Expanse, like, come on. <laughs> Watch The Expanse. It's so good. Excellent. Um, uh, Hopper, uh, any shout outs or plug this week? Um, I think uh, all my normal ones have been yelled about, but yeah, come on Saturday at, uh, I believe it's, uh, that's uh, 3 p.m. Is that correct? Um, Eastern time, come y'all. Chikra is a delight and Zethu is a delight and our other two uh, PCs are fucking delights. But Delight's an interesting way of... Um... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you not consider a bloodthirsty Ewok obsessed with killing Imperials? Oh no, a, I a consider delight? I consider that a delight. Do you consider a bonkers baby Sith like out of control with their powers a delight? Yeah, but that's because I'm a masochist. <laughs> um, so uh, and then as always, uh, encounter parties amazing. Shout out to. Uh, Jeff Stormer's other podcast, All My Fantasy Children, which is fucking amazing if you like great uh, off-the-cuff world-building, storytelling, character creation. Um, him and Eric Catano Saez also do a great fucking job. Um, and if we're yelling about random TV shows, Netflix, what the fuck? Renew Teenage Bounty Hunters. It's the best random ass IP you've ever made. It's unre it's there's no reason it should be good. And how are you gonna fucking cancel it? What the fuck? All right. I'm done. And while we're talking about canceled TV shows, Farscape and um I'm kidding. Uh <laughs> um uh Marissa, any shout outs or plugs this week? Uh, yeah, well, speaking of the expanse, um, in my day job as a philosophy books editor, we are working on an expanse in philosophy book, which will be going to press soon, which means it's about eight months or so out. Um, and uh, we'll have a foreword from the series creators. So keep an eye out for that. It's pretty, it's going to be pretty amazing. Awesome. Um, also, uh, if anyone's been enjoying Bridgerton, um, one of my goals is to get the Good Society stuff that I ran last summer up on YouTube soon. Um, and Good Society, for those who don't know, is a Regency era role playing game, and it basically is Bridgerton. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the way we played it, it's true. Sure oh, yeah, so pretty much. much. <laughs> pretty much. Um, so, yeah, keep your eye on our YouTube channel. Those should be going up soon. Um, in addition, also our, uh, our Muppet one shot from December, which was amazing and delightful. So, keep an eye out for those things. Love it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, as as uh, one of the editors on our team, uh, it is now my goal to actually make good on all these promises. So uh, <laughs> look for me doing my best on that. Um, so for my side, uh, Encounter Party is going to be uh, live, I think it's live right now. So we're going to go ahead and raid them, which is super cool. Um, the shout outs and plugs I have, I want to give another shout out to uh, Alpha Dean Lewis of uh, Cypher Unlimited and their crew. Uh, they are super awesome people, and they're really cool uh, folks, and 
Uh, Dean came out with a really great cipher system supplement uh, for using magic within uh, the cipher system rules system. Uh, call, and this uh, tome is called Mal Vandal's uh, Mythic Vade uh, Mekum, a Mega Magic Remix. So check that out. Um, the only other thing I want to say is just uh, thanks so much, guys, for uh, hanging out and for uh, watching the show. We're glad that you're sticking with us through uh, part one, and uh, we're going to have more War Report and eventually more Hole in the World uh, stuff coming to you. Uh, we've got a bunch of different stuff that I'm working on. Uh, we're going to have those two last two episodes up soon. I'm going to hopefully maybe make some audio stuff along those lines as well. But in the meantime, guys, thanks so much. I uh, hope everybody is taking care of yourselves, taking care of each other, taking care of your loved ones. Uh, do whatever you need to make sure you guys are whole and safe uh, throughout this, and we will be with you guys in another two weeks. And But in the meantime, as always, the invisible sun shine on you all. Bye, guys. Good night. Go Chiefs. <laughs>